Daisy, what do you want? Daisy, heck, you're full of vim and vigour this morning, aren't you? I'm used to you staggering about half asleep and half-witted at this what time. What do you want? Now you could give me. Unless you happen to have a diamond ring in your pocket and you're wondering the best way to give it me for the biggest surprise. Oh, I'm full of tricks like that, aren't I? Yeah, well, some fellas are, Stan. Perhaps not with diamond rings, but with uh, flowers and little trinkets like that, you know, just to show their affection and appreciation. I show my affection and appreciation for you by keeping a roof over your head. Oh, and I'm very grateful, Stan. No, I am really. Well, especially for this roof in this street. Because this is your quality street, isn't it, where all the toffs live? Oh, you can't get out the door for Rolls Royces. You can scoff all right, but it might have done worse. A lot worse. You know, you keep saying that, Stan. How worse? Go on, tell me, I'm dying to know. Well, you might have married Harry Bennett. I don't even know an Harry Bennett. His wife collects rags in a pram, is Mrs. Does. I don't have to collect rags. I flame him wear them. Hey, what's that? What's the matter with you? You're like a cat on a brick. It's all right, it's only me, smiling Eddie Yates. Well, what have you got to smile about? Nothing much as it happens. Mm, join the club. Here, I've remembered what I was going to say to you. Now, when you're passing Atherton's on your round, well, you are going out to work today, are you? Of course I am. Oh, I just wondered, that's all. I thought you might be going to some race meeting somewhere, you know, like you do. In fact, I've brushed your top hat and polished your field glasses. Less of you. your sarcasm. Yeah, well, when you're passing Atherton's, get us a pair of kippers. But not if they're 74p. Ah, uh, the How does a pair of kippers get to be 74p, eh? I hear they're having to go to the Pacific for them now, Hilda. You know, you're daft, you. There's no more any kippers in the Pacific than there is herrings. She's shouting and bawling well this morning, your Hilda, isn't she? Yeah, I think as she gets older, she gets quieter. Her voice would wear out. I yeah, can't. on the other hand, the older she gets, the more experience she gets. Yeah. Let's hope she doesn't live till she's 90. Well. Well, what? Do you have any more bright ideas about what we're going to tell the law? I not mean, so they don't wheel us inside and chuck away the key. Not one, have I? This is serious caper, this now, Stanley. We're in dead lumber, mate. I know we are. You don't have to tell me that. How is she? Just a bit bellyache. She'll be right as rain in an hour or two. You see, she's not. Listen, Ray, you will have a word with Len this morning, won't you? Oh, come on, dear. Oh, come on, nothing. I meant what I said, so it's only fair to tell him. But what will we gain moving away? I want a fresh start. We don't have to move away. You can get a fresh start here. No, I can't. This place has got a jinx on it. Well, that's daft. It's not the place. You might be right at that. Well, then. Look, we won't know unless we do go, will we? So to prove someone that probably isn't even right, we give up everything? This house, business, mates, friends, everything? I want to get away from here, Ray. Far enough away so there aren't things to... Well, keep reminding me. Can't you see that? Well, you can forget about it without moving. No, I can't. Well, I bloody can. Why can't you? It wasn't me messing about with somebody else. That was you, Ray. But we'd be giving up years. Everything we've got. I was now. I was just a little yobbo. Now I'm a partner in a good business. I've got a nice house. Yeah, well, you should have thought of that. But just give it another few weeks. I'm going, Ray. With or without you. Mommy. Mommy. Tell Len. Oh, blast, I can't find it. I'll be lost, Elsa. Holy passport. You haven't? Well, if it isn't in any of these drawers, I have, and it isn't. Well, what are you going to do? You can't go without your passport. All you've got to do is keep cool. Work through a method and examine each and every article in turn instead of rummaging about like a dog with a bone. I see. Well, as you're such an expert in finding things, perhaps you'd like to come and give us a hand with this. Well, I would, but I'm having my breakfast. Oh. I'll help you. See. Thanks, love. You look through that, please. I'll help you. Right. Well, don't forget what I said. Work to a method, each and every article in turn. I'll work to a method on you in a minute. I'll bash your head in. <laughs> you know what I think? What? I think it's a sign I shouldn't go to Mallorca, losing my passport. Well, don't be daft. Mm. Well, I mean, I might be heading for the biggest disaster of my life, and I had some big ones, you know. Why should you be? Look, how long have I known Ron? And how long have I been in his company? A couple of hours, and here I am going on holiday with him. I mean, we might run out of conversation on the plane and might find out we've got nothing in common. Of course you have. You know you have. You'll have one thing in common for certain if you stay at a beautiful romantic hotel. You have got a dirty mind. Mm. Yeah. Well, I still think it's a sign. Not anymore. It's here. Oh. What did I say? Work to a method. Well, at least look happy and relieved. Oh, I am, I am. You could have fooled me. Hey, just a minute. It's out of date. It's not. What does that say? It's out of date. Yeah. Well, I still think it's a sign. I wasn't meant to go to me, okay? I just wasn't meant to go. Elsie. Hmm? 
You can get a temporary passport right this morning at any post office. All you need is your birth certificate and a couple of photos. Are you sure? Positive. So, Mallorca, here you come. I'll tell you one thing for certain, Elsie. What? I bet young Ron's walking his toes this morning. Like a young lion. <laughs> so he should be. How do? Well, uh, could you just repeat that, please, Mr. Wilson? Uh, no, no, I've got, I've got that. It's just that last word. Could you spell it for me, please? Yeah. C L A double D R N G. Cladding. Have I got that right, have I? Cladding. Oh, no, it's just that uh, I haven't been at this job very long. No, no, I, I've got that. I've written it all down, Mr. Wilson. Yes, thank you, Mr. Wilson. Well, I'll pass your message on then to Mr. Fairclough. Yeah, goodbye, Mr. Wilson. Uh, that one, Mr. Wilson. Fancy. And it's about his external flu. His external flu? Yes, it's given him trouble. Is it? Yeah. Uh, apparently, it's the cladding. It's the cladding? <laughs> That's what he said. Who's Mr. Wilson? Who's Mr. Wilson? Yeah, the one who's having trouble with his external flu. Not to mention his cladding. Well, don't you know him? Never heard of him. Have you? No. Well, he, he came on the phone and it, it was that Len Faircliffe, he said, because I'm having trouble. Well, I thought he knew you. So you didn't get an address? No. That's marvellous. That's great, that is. How many other untraceable clients have we got waiting around out there? Well, I thought he knew you, Mr. Faircliffe, so it seemed to follow that you'd know him. Well, I don't. So next time, get an address, eh? I mean, it is important. Even you can see that. I'm going off to Fisher's. It's flipping incredible. It's incredible, you know. I mean, as if I haven't got enough on me. Please, 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 please. Hello, Stan. Hiya. Uh, have you got a minute? Yeah. Uh, just a favour, but only a small one. Oh, yeah? Last Monday. What about it? I did the windows over the factory, you know. Did you? Oh, well, I'm very pleased for you. Congratulations. So, if anybody asks you, that's what you'll say. What? I did the windows last Monday. Well, like who? Well, anybody. You been up to something? Have I, egg? Hang about. You don't do our windows Mondays. You do them Thursdays. First Thursday in every month. I'm sorry, I don't know what you're up to, but I'm not telling nobody nothing. All sounds highly suspicious to me, Stanley. Mrs Ogden? What sounds suspicious? What's he on about? What are you on about? He said something sounds suspicious. I heard him. Well, you heard more than I did. And where do you think you're going as if I didn't know? You just come back in here and get your dinner first. I'm going for a pint. I'm as dry as a sandpit. In that house. I'm not making dinner for you and then seeing it turn to a piece of clinker in the oven. My life's not worth living. Now, well, whose fault's that? If we're the authors of our own misfortunes, you must never stop writing. Stanley? What's your mate been up to, then? What mate? Well, Mr Ogden. Why? Well, he was asking me to say that he was cleaning our windows one day when he wasn't. Sounded like he needed an alibi to me. He asked you that? Mm, just now. I told him what to do with himself. And I asked him to come up with some bright ideas. No wonder I'm in a deep state of depression. Very glad to see that you're having your bonfire not on the Sabbath, kind of fellow, like most people are. Well, it was suggested that we did, Mrs. Sharples. I mean, Sunday being November the 5th. Yeah, then somebody mentioned your name. Yeah, so we changed our minds rapidly. Oh, well, it's nice to know that I've still got some influence around here. You certainly have, Mrs. Sharples. There's never been in any doubt. Well, definitely not. Well, it never was needed more than it is today. Anybody see the paper last night? Every item on the front page has something to do with violence of some sort or another or vandalism. Every single item. Oh, my gum, this generation of parents has got so much to answer for. Not to mention the schools. Well, don't look at me, Mrs. Walker. I mean, I've not been a teacher now for, uh, well, for a very long time. Shall I tell you something, Kenneth Barlow? What upsets me about folk is that they're, they're uncaring. They don't give a fig for anybody else so long as they're doing all right. You know, I'd have thought all this prosperity would have made folk kinder. But it hasn't, you know. They're hard, ruthless. Never seem to meet a gentle person anymore. It's very sad. Here, here, Mrs. Sharples. 
I agree with you absolutely. Oh, give us a gin and tonic, kid, before I pass out. I thought you'd gone on your holidays. Oh, if I ever get there, my passport was only out of date. Mm. Can't you go, then? I've just been to the post office for a temporary one. What a disappointment for you if you come to Ghana. Not to mention, Ron. Lay off. I'm going for a rest. What else? I believe you're going away on holiday, else you time. You believe right, Mrs. Sharples? With a gentleman friend, I believe. Right again? Getting very quiet, isn't it? Not especially, no. Oh. Maybe not. You never have in the past. Oh, I go. She doesn't miss the opportunity to dig anything up, does she? You can't fight your reputation, love. Let's face it, you've been a long time making it. Come on, Elsie, admit it. You've had some fun. Yes, I have. All right, have I got the rowers now? I mean, have I got your permission? Don't you get sarcastic with me, Stanley Ogden. They say sarcasm is the lowest form of wit. In your case, it's the lowest form of stupidity. I'm not staying here to be insulted. They'll insult you out there just the same, so what's the difference? No, you're what did you say? Nothing. Don't you swear at me under your breath. It's me what should be swearing at you, all the trouble you get us into. Because you're feckless, you. You're a dead loss, always have been and always will be. Elder. What? Do you realise the damage you do to my self-confidence talking to me like that? Hey? Eh? You heard. Look, nobody could damage your self-confidence, Stanley, because that's always been your big trouble. You're always so blooming pleased with yourself. You think you're such a smart aleck. Who is it? Detective Thornton. How are you then, Mrs Ogden? Well, what do you want? You're starting to be a fixture here. I've got neighbours, you know, with beady eyes and wagging tongues. It was ever thus, Mrs Ogden. Most of my customers would like to do business in the dark and in the middle of a field. One woman reckoned last week that my calling had sent property prices plummeting in the district. Well, what do you want? Well, I've still got this problem. Is that right, Mr Ogden? Uh, oh, yeah, yes, yes. You see, it's this lead we found on his cart that was pinched on the Monday afternoon. That's what's causing all the trouble. You see, Mr Ogden and Mr Yates don't seem to remember exactly what they were doing that afternoon. So, my superintendent, who happens to believe that... Uh, Two birds in the hand are worth like a million in the bush. He says, nick em. Nick em? Arrest us. That's what my superintendent says, Mrs Ogden. You were right. There's not much wrong with her now. Yeah, I'll get her up for a bit after dinner. Well, what did he say? What did he say? Len. I've not had a chance to talk to him yet, have I? Ray. I haven't. But I went in the yard this morning, he was having an up and down with Mavis, then he buzzed off out. I've not seen him since. I think you're putting it off. Yes, you would. All right, then, have a word with him this afternoon. You sure you still want to? You've not changed your mind. No, Ray. Just think what we'll be losing. Look, I don't care if we lose everything. Our last penny. I want a new star. I, I want to wipe the slate clean. I don't know if it'll work, but I, I just know we can't stay around here because everybody will be waiting for us to fail again. Can't you see that? All right. All right. It seems to me, Mr Ogden, that you're well and truly up the creek without even a canoe, never mind a paddle. You don't seem to get my meaning. You do surprise me. Look, thinking I was cleaning Baldwin's windows, I haven't checked what I was actually doing, have I? You haven't? So if you could give me, say, two hours before you run us in, like, you know, all I mean... Two hours isn't long, is it? I'll tell you what, it is lunchtime. I like to go to this little pub out Worsley Way for me lunch when I have an excuse. You can be my excuse today. But, uh, don't leave the country. Bye bye, Mrs. Ogden. <sighs> that was close. Too close for comfort. Elder. Go and fetch Eddie Yates here. What for? I said go and fetch Eddie Yates here. Now. All right, Joe. Well, one for the road, kid, or in your case, the flight. No, thanks, love. I can't until be late. Oh, well, shall I come in with you, Elsie? I wish you were going with her the state you're in. <laughs> Look, I'll resign if he shouts at me again. I will. Oh, then, fair love. He's always shouting, but that's the way he is. He doesn't mean it, oh, well. Seems as if he means it. Anyway, I hope you have a lovely time in New York. Thanks, love. I will. 
Well, goodbye, Mrs. Sharples. Goodbye, Mrs. Uh, Walker. Have a good time, dear. She will. Don't you worry, I will. <laughs> See you. Life in the old dog yet, eh, Mrs. Sharples? Good luck to her. That's all I've got to say. I'll do. Oh, don't you even speak to me. What's up with you? I heard about you in the windows across the road. Was that the best you could do in by way of an alibi? No wonder the net's closing in. And it's getting closer. How's that? Thornton's been round. He's coming back this afternoon to neck us. Right, that's it. I'm away. Not you, not me, not going. Not to see our Hilda. Hilda? What's your Hilda got to do with anything? Look, she wants to see you and won't take no for an answer. As if I haven't got enough on me plate without your Hilda shoving her nose in. Oh, go on, get us a pint. Now you get them in. It's your mate that got us in this mess. All right, Stanley, don't get nasty. Mrs. Walker. Ralph. Ralph Wilson. Uh, can you tell me, are you the fellow that made an inquiry today about an outside vent, a heating vent? You're not? Uh, no, no, I just uh, must have got the message wrong, that's all. Uh, no, sorry to bother you. It wasn't Ralph Wilson, either. It wasn't. No, it doesn't matter, though. I've got a dozen more I can ring up. I mean, that's all I've got to do, isn't it? Ring them all up. Well, I haven't made any more mistakes or messages today. You only had one. Well, I've said I'm sorry. I can't keep saying it. All right, forget it, didn't I? Mavis, yeah. could you uh, step outside for a minute? I want a private word with Len. Why, Ken? It's cold out there. I nearly got my death yesterday. Please? I shouldn't be treated like this. Not a chattel, you know. All right, so I've been a bit out on her, but she's so... Not thin. about me. What is it about, then? I'm jacking it in. You're jacking what in? This. This business, my partnership. What? Why? We're, uh, we're flitting. Well, all right, so you're flitting. That's no Away. need... Away, to... somewhere. Out of this area. Oh, I see. Deirdre. No, no, it's my decision. I think it's for the best after, uh, well, you know. I did warn you, didn't I? I did flame in, tell you. Yeah, yeah, you did. So it's all down to me now. I mean, you behave like a prize mug and you screw your life up for the sake of a bit of skirt. And I'm left to pick up the pieces here. I don't see what... I'm the flaming loser. It's me what's losing everything. Well, what about me? You're leaving me in the lurch, aren't you? It's all right for you. You can just pack your bags and say ta-da. I'm left here to sort this lot out. You'll find somebody else. I might find a fella, yeah. I don't think I'll find another partner. Of course you will. Just as things were going well and all. Oh, you twit. You bloody twit! Yes, I'm all of that. Nobody knows it better than me. Oh, can you just talk to her? I mean, let me talk to her. Rita? It's my decision. Yeah, and I'm a tube of cornflakes. You flaming Burke. What are you? Thanks, Len. I knew you'd understand. Oh, is it all right if I go in now? You can set fire to the place for all I care. Well, here I am. I'm ready. Now, where'd I put my passport? With your money in your handbag for the umpteenth time. Ah, hey, you ought to see my passport photograph. Yeah, it's a scream. I didn't say it was a scream. I said it was a... Uh, uh, more, more, more of a character study, like mine. Dead right. <laughs> there, you see, I've got something in common. There's no need to be nervous. What's all this about being nervous? She, she means the flying. Join the club. Oh, somewhere else. Shut up. <laughs> That's our taxi. Are you ready, Elsie? Yes, well, of course I'm ready. Now, where did I put my handbag? On your suitcase in the hall. All right, well, here I am, as ready as I'll ever be. Well, come on, fella, what are you hanging about for? Me, hanging about. <laughs> now then, you see that Susie's all right, and you look after the house, eh? Yes, Elsie. Yes, and get up to no tricks. No, Elsie. Right. And don't forget to bring us a present back. Oh, I will, if I've got any brass left. Have a good time. Right. Won't be my fault if she doesn't. Here he is, Chuck. Sorry I've been so long, but I couldn't let, lay my hands on him, you know. Hello, Wilde. Hey, you got to see me. Look, it's about that sheepskin coat. I think you Now, there's a policeman coming here soon to arrest Stan. 
Oh, I don't think it'll come to that, Hilda. You know, policemen, they exaggerate, you know. Oh, I believe what policemen say I was brought up to. Yeah, well, I was brought up to believe the opposite, you see. I don't want Stan arresting. Who does? I said I don't. I don't want my husband arresting for anything, especially not for being a thief. He's not a tea leaf, Mrs. O. If he's arrested as one, he'll always be one in the eyes of everybody round here. Yeah, mud sticks, I know. Yeah, but he's not going to get any on him, is he? You're going to see to that. How's that? When that detective comes back, you're going to tell him who really stole that lead. I can't do that. Why can't you? Well, it's what's known in the trade as, uh, well, grassing on a friend. And besides, Tiny would have my head for a doorstop. I don't think you think I'm serious, do you, Eddie? Well, you can't be serious. Look, I know what Stan is. Nobody knows better. He's... Ah, oh, well, never you mind. But he is my husband. We've been together a good many years now. Nearly 35, in fact. Even had some good times together. And I'll not see him called a thief. Not under any circumstances. But, Mrs. And another I... thing. It's not all that long since you nearly got him into the same sort of trouble. Using his wind around to see what houses was worth burglaring. Yeah, well, I was wrong there. But I paid the penalty. Yeah, well, the police have got long memories. They remember that and all. So besides the shame, he stands a good chance of going to prison, doesn't he? Don't he? Well, it's not impossible. Hey. Right, then. You know what you've got to do? Do it. But, Mrs. Because if you don't, I will. I'll tell that detective it with Tiny Hargreaves, and you'll still get the blame, won't you, Eddie? Oh, all right, you win, Mrs. O. Not because I'm afraid of Tiny, which I am. But I didn't want Stan taking the blame anyway. I mean, he is my mate, for better or worse. Like he's your husband. Mm. Heaven help you. Yeah, similar. I don't think I like that. Now, shut up, Stan. Else I might just change my mind and give Thornton a quid to take you off my hands. What did he say? What do you think he said? Oh, yeah, I've told him then. Yes, I've told him. Good. That's that out of the way. Now all we have to decide is where we're moving to. Oh, haven't you got that sorted out yet? I am surprised. No, I actually haven't made my mind up yet. I'm sorry for you. Between Australia and Canada. I can deliver this lot on my way to town all this afternoon. It's not out of the way. Do you know some at Alf Roberts? Oh, hey, up. I've forgotten. It's enough sardines. I could have done a lot worse. Hey? You've turned to this like a duck to water. I don't know how I managed before when I were on my own. No, I don't know either. I'll tell you something else and all, as what? you haven't noticed, what? I'm lovely with it. Now, don't you start getting swelled, Eddie, just because I'm feeling affectionate. Oh, is that what it is? Could you take them two and all, could you? I might have known. Cut to your love. Of course I can. <laughs> come here. Mm. What's that for? Do I have to have a reason? Well, someone might come in, you know. So? Lippy, Nick, you've only just had your breakfast. Yeah, well, she's in a very funny mood this morning. Oh. It. As soon as you start showing your husband that you appreciate him, he gets all embarrassed. Glenn's just the same. You'd think they didn't like a kiss and a cuddle, wouldn't you? Yeah, we don't. Rubbish. You thrive on it. Ooh. You can tell with them here, can't you? Oh, don't remind me. No, me. Anyway, is it true that the Langtons are leaving? Leaving? Look, it'd be a rumour, I keep telling you. It's not, you know, Al. They are leaving. Ray's told Len. You mean leaving the area? Yeah. He said they were emigrating. You want to hear what Len thinks about it and all? He's blowing his top. I can't believe it. Well, it does seem funny, doesn't it? I mean, they've got it made. A good job and a nice little home. I don't know. Some folk are never satisfied, are they? Well, actually, I think there's more to it than that. Is that right, Emily? Hmm? I say I think there's more to it than just a change of scene. Um, I'm sorry. I'll come back later. I I'm sorry. Well, it's obvious she knows not about it. What did you think that I told her one at first? I mean, they've been like her family since Ernest. She's Tracy's godmother. Anyway, what did you mean? Mean? You said there were more to it than just wanting to move. Did I? You know very well you did. Oh, well, I suppose it'll come out sooner or later. Ray's been acting the goat. Morning. You sleep all right? Oh, not so bad. I'm getting used to it now. 
It took me a while to drop off, though. Well, I had a lot to think about, hadn't I? Yeah, I was the same. You've not been having second thoughts, have you? No, of course not. I think it's a great idea. Oh, we're young enough. Of course we are. And it'd be great to make a completely fresh start. Aye, wipe the slate clean. Well, that's exactly what it will do. Mind you, we're going to have to make us minds up which one it's to be, Australia or New Zealand. I don't think I mind. Me neither. I mean, it doesn't make much difference, does it? You live upside down in both them places. Hey, I mean it, you know. I'm not just playing games. I know you mean it. I don't think my mum thinks I do. I'm expecting her to phone me up any time with a mouthful. Well, she's not going to be all that chuffed, is she? Her only daughter's swanning off to the other side of the world. Well, she just have to lump it. Aye. I know one thing. What? She'll blame me. Tyler. Look, tell Mr Fisher I want to see him right away, will you? He's to drop whatever he's doing. Why is it I can never get a cup of coffee in this place unless it's stone cold? Oh, well, I did tell them. Uh... Do you want this one? Yeah, it's... Uh... Right then, let's have them. Sorry? All the excuses. Hey? Well, what's all this then? Oh, bills, dockets, worksheets, yesterday's mostly. Well, don't look so pleased with yourself. I can tell her yesterday's mostly. Well, there might just be a couple from the day before, but what with Elsie being away? All right, you may have been a bit pushed, but they shouldn't be here, should they, eh? On my desk? Well, I thought you liked knowing what was going on. I do like to know what's going on, but I don't expect to find out for myself. I expect you to know. Then all I've got to do is ask, right? Right. Good. Well, I'm glad we got that sorted out. It's all a question of, uh... Me taking more responsibility. Exactly. Only when I do and I make a decision, more often than not, you countermand it. I do not. You do. Anyway, I'm not having a dog and doing all the barking myself, so get on with it. Woof, woof. And Fisher, you better watch yourself. Out, Mr. Fairclough. Do you wonder the flipping time I got up? <laughs> Just doing the paper round do that to you. <laughs> Must be true when they say that women are the stronger sex. Then I can do it all week without feeling tired. Can you? Mm. Will you be doing it again tomorrow? It depends, doesn't it? Whether she kicks me out of bed again. You must be very out of condition. Have you done those invoices yet? Yes, I just got one or two more to do. Oh, I must say. I'm enjoying my lines and not having to start work till nine. <laughs> don't rub it in, Mavis. Well, they say change is as good as a rest, don't they? And I'm getting both. Mavis! All right. Bye, Eck. I'm ready for this. You're looking a bit under the weather, mate. No, don't you start. Sorry. Come to your senses, have you? In what respect? You know bloody well what respect. Oh, if you mean am I still going? Yes, I am. And do you know where I'm going? Yes, I can guess. Not end. Australia. Or New Zealand. You what? Since when? Since last night. You are bloody tapped. <coughs> you know where the door is, Mavis. Look, I'm not going outside to stand in that cold again. You just have to moderate your language, Mr. Fairclough. You've got to hope. Australia, New Zealand. You do want your head examining. Well, I don't think so. This is another one of Deirdre's bright ideas, isn't it? No, it's my idea. Liar. Don't you call me a liar, Len. You're lying in your flipping teeth. It's one of Deirdre's ideas. I'm warning you, mate. If you'll excuse me, I think I will go outside after all. All right. So you've been a mug. You're in the doghouse with Deirdre. She'll get over it. Women do. We're going, Len. See, you walk out. Just like that. Where does that leave me? Oh, we've been through all this. Oh, listen, Ray. Just because you're having a change doesn't mean it's a change for the better, you know. Not always. This isn't a perfect job, but it's not bad. I mean, we please ourselves what we take on. Now we parcel it out what time we finish. I'm telling you, two months with a foreman breathing down your neck and you couldn't wait to be back here. Do you reckon? Three months at the outside. Well, in that case, I'd better start saving me pennies, hadn't I? Because it's going to cost a packet to get the three of us back from Australia or New Zealand. Where's 
and it's none of our business what they get up to in Mallorca, Fred G. Anywhere else, for that matter. Hey, Ron seems a nice enough chap. Yeah. Funny hobbies, though, aren't I? Mean, flipping ballroom dancing. Jacques, à son goût. Come again. Each man to his own taste, Frederick. Hey, I'll tell you what, good idea for pulling the birds, though, innit? <laughs> Forget it. You're the wrong shape. Oh, well, I'm a lovely mover, Betty. <laughs> I wish some bloke could turn up with a ticket to Mallorca for me. I shouldn't care what his hobbies were. <laughs> hey, you want to watch it? Some blokes have some very funny hobbies around yeah, here. Ah, well, chaps, will be a fine thing. Do you reckon I'll ever be that lucky, Ken? If men had any sense, Betty, they'd be queuing up. Ah, oh, ain't it lovely? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mrs Walker, I was saying, Elsie Tanner and her friend, I bet they're having a smashing time in Mallorca. I suppose so, if one likes such run-of-the-mill package holiday places as Mallorca. But you went yourself. Ah, yes, dear. But if you remember, that was a competition prize. I didn't go from personal choice. No. <laughs> that <looking> woman. <laughs> Fine, is it? Ah. Well, better take a good deck of you lot. Yeah, I reckon I might remember you all. Especially him. Not a pretty sight at the best of times. What are you on about, Ray Langton? You uh, fancy a spot of surfing, Betty? What did I say? A fortnight in Cornwall, <laughs> at the very least. No, not Cornwall, mate. Australia. Me and Deirdre, we're emigrating. Emigrating? You're not serious, are you? I am. So if you're thinking of having a whip round for a spare well do, you can get cracking. When was all this decided? Uh, a while since, really. Hey, you're a dark horse and no mistake. Uh, you never can tell, eh? No. Okay, could I have a word with you, mate? Yeah, sure. Well, it's the papers and that. Do I have to send to London for them, or where? Well, have you not been to the Australian Emigration Office in Manchester? No, not yet. Ah, then Manchester's obviously your first start. You find them very helpful. I, uh, thought I'd come and say hello to Mr. Baldwin. Fancy you being Bradley's new buyer. I can't get over it. Well, Jack Richards has gone to live in Scotland. It's all a bit sudden, actually. Domestic trouble. Yeah, Jack is a bit of a lad, isn't he? Oh, you can say that again. Uh, do you think I could see Mr. Baldwin, then? I don't see why not. Hang on a minute. Visitor for you. Whoever it is, they can wait. This can't. Well, it's the new buyer from Bradley's. Oh, well, is that Greenwood's? Look, put me on to your Mr. Kenny, will you? Should have phoned me back two hours ago. Bradley's? Yeah. Ah, waste of time. Well, you reckon? Yeah, absolutely. When was the last time they put anything our way? The last thing I want to listen to is that Burke going on about his greenhouse. I see. So, uh, you'd like me to deal with it? Like I said this morning, I expect you to do the chores. Right, then. Oh, one thing, though. Yeah? Don't go mad. He's only worth a pint, a pint of the Rovers. Right. I'll see you. Yeah. Oh, hello, yeah. Well, if you can't get him, love, put me on to sales. Yes, yeah, sales, love, sales. Mum! Aren't you going to ask me in, then? Oh, of course I am. Come in, you dumb thing. <laughs> what are you doing here, then? As if you didn't know. Where's Tracy? Oh, she's out. There's a girl I know takes her out now and again. She all right? Yeah, she's fine. Never been better. More than could be said for you, obviously. Now, ma'am. Now, ma'am, nothing. What's going on? Nothing's going on. We've just made a decision, that's all. How did you get here? How do you think? Betraying. A decision. That's what you call it, is it? Well, what else? I call it balmy. Do you know what you're doing? Yes, we do. You've never even mentioned emigrating before. Well, we've been thinking about it for a long time, as a matter of fact. I don't believe it. Well, we have. And unless we do it now, we probably never will. We'll be stuck in this little back street forever. Ray working round at the yard, never getting anywhere. Just stuck here. He'll be making a packet of money over there and all. So that's it. I thought as much. Eh? It's Ray, isn't it? He's the one that's brought all this on. It's his daft idea. It's not Ray, Mom. Of course it's Ray, isn't it? Isn't it, Deirdre? Well, I knew you'd be upset. I expected that. But I thought at least you'd try to understand. Understand? Well, my only daughter says she's going to live across the other side of the world, taking my only grandchild with her. But what do you think I'm made of? Stone? <laughs> Hey, you've not done the labels are out yet, have you? Because there's been a change of plan. Australia's out, 
New Zealand, here we come. Here, look at this. How's about that for a mountain, eh? What's up with you? We've got a visitor. Oh, who? Hello, Ray. Hmm. Well, I guess you'd turn up. Caught the first train, I could. How are you? I were fine, till Deirdre rang me last night. Now, don't start, you two. Just sit yourselves down. So, it's uh, New Zealand now, is it? Not Australia. That's right. Look, Mum, he's come home for his dinner. Well, he can eat and talk, can't he? She's scared of you. Did you know that? Your own daughter, she's scared of Ray. you. Hey! Don't talk so daft. She'd rather have gone without telling oh, you. Oh, don't talk so silly. Oh, no, let him carry on. I mean, let's have the truth, the whole truth. Look, we're emigrating and that's all there is to it. To the other side of the world. Well, that's not so bad. With cheap fares, you'd be able to come over for holiday. Once, if I'm lucky. Look, you should be pleased. It'll be smashing for Tracy and Ray'll be earning a lot more money out there. Well, money isn't everything. Look, what the heck do you want? First of all, I'm not good enough for your precious daughter and now you're complaining when there's a chance of me making some to myself. You don't care, do you, Ray, how I feel? You get this stupid idea and you don't even stop to think how it might affect me. It wasn't Ray's idea, it was mine. I've told you I don't believe that. Well, it happens to be true. I see. It's our lives, Mum. You're the only family I've got. But distance is nothing these days, you'll see. Of course it is. Can't catch a train to New Zealand, can I? Well, I love this sort of work. You know, meeting new people all the time. Well, every day is different. Well, you're making me jealous. What, a budding tycoon? <laughs> Some tycoon. Well, I think you're very sweet. What, not tough and sexy? Of course. <laughs> Liar. Oh, aye, aye, the boss. Hi. Hello. Carol Gordon, Mr Baldwin. You can call me Mike. Can I get you a drink? Yeah, I'll have a scotch. Carol? No, I'm fine at the moment, thanks. You know, he never ceases to amaze me, that boy. Oh? There must be more to him than meets the eye. Well, you ought to know, working with him. Oh, been talking, has he? Sadly stopped. So you know all about me? I meant about himself. Well, we'll have to remedy that. Good. There you are. Oh, cheers. Cheers. I take it you got rid of that Burke from Bradley's, then? Uh, no, not exactly, Mr. Baldwin. No, I didn't. Oh, no. Don't tell me he's coming again this afternoon. <laughs> uh, no, he isn't. Well, what's so funny? <laughs> Over to you. I'm afraid uh, I'm the Burt from Bradley's. <laughs> you what? Carol's the new buyer. Then why the hell didn't you tell me? You can wipe that stupid grin off your face as well. Look, uh, I'm sorry, love. I had no idea. See you later, mate. He won't get his cards, will he? Ah, well, that depends. On what? How soon he can get back to the factory and get stuck into some work. Oh, but I can't, can I? And why not? Well, Carol said she'd like to see the Western Front. I'm going to take her there. Don't worry. I'll handle that. Sorry, it's all arranged. Ready, Carol? I'm willing. You, uh, finish your drink, Mr Baldwin, and leave me to do the, uh, barking. Bye. What about stuffed pancakes? Uh, yeah, all right, then. I hope she likes them. She hardly had anything at dinner time. A lot of time if we only ate once a week. You go bankrupt. Oh, I never thought of that. <laughs> go get your dinner, love. I'll take over. Deirdre's mother's visiting. Is she? How is she? Oh, same as ever. Give her my love. Hey, yeah. watch it, Robert. Go get your dinner, woman. You see, I'm putting in his hands. <laughs> oh. Oh, Sam. 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 Hello, Emily. Uh, hello. Just been round to your place, but you weren't in. No. I've got some news for you. Heard, as a matter of fact. You're emigrating. Yeah. Well, we've not gone yet. Ta-ra. Some folk have all the luck, don't they? Yes. This is your house, isn't it, my little pet? Oh, not for much longer, though. Oh, Tracy, what are we going to do with that silly mammy of yours? I don't know, I'm sure. Wanted to take you all that way away. Honestly, Mum, you do go on. Your mammy doesn't care one little bit about you, Granny, does she? Not one little bit. Now, you know that's not true. I shan't be able to watch her growing up. Do you realise that? I mean, all her little birthday parties, going to school for the first time, 
I'm not Noah, Deirdre. All I'll be to her is a, a Christmas card and a parcel on her birthday. Oh, oh my gorgeous. Mm. Will you be late? Well, I shouldn't think so, unless she'd rather I got digs somewhere. Taking a notice of them, lovey. They're just daft, don't they? What are they? They're just daft. All right? Yeah. Thanks very much. A very nice order. Should keep us in sugar for a couple of weeks. I'll come back to you later if you want any more of the dark blue. Any time. A feather in your cap with Mr Baldwin? Absolutely. And I can always do it that. Oh, a bit of a tyrant, is he? Yeah. But uh, I can handle it. I'm sure you can. <laughs> Hi. What do you reckon on the Western Front then? Well, uh, Oh, like that, wasn't it? Well, some of your gear's a bit old hat. Charming. Well, what do you mean, old hat? Well, old-fashioned. It's like last year's. Well, you know what the kids are like. You can't afford to sit back. Yeah, we'll have to watch that. Steve, have a word with Ivy, will you? She said her machine's on the blink again. What now? If not sooner. Right. Oh, uh, by the way, Carol likes the new blue. She's given me the order. It's on your desk. He's a nice boy. Yeah, he's all right. Not bad. Any more where this came from? Well, we're a big concern. And they made you their buyer. You must be a very smart young lady. I've done all right so far. And what's next? Oh, come on, give me a chance. I've only just started this job. Yeah, but it's not much of a challenge, is it? Old established firm, old established customers. Not much of a chance to make your mark. Who uh, says I want a challenge? Me. Such as? Just an idea I had. You know, working for me. Nothing definite as yet, but uh, if I ever give you the buzz... Then it would be definite. Right. Something to look forward to. All right. Bye, Mr Baldwin. See ya. Oh, uh, not going, are you? Do you know how long I've been here? Most of the day. And every second appreciated. Is he like you, or are you like him? Oh, he tries to be like me. Do you know, he very nearly offered me a job then. You what? He's amazing. Quite amazing. Bye, see you around. Well, what was it then? Sorry? Ivy's machine. Oh, um, the lead. Usual story. Uh, Mike? Yeah? We've not got any plans for expanding or anything, have we? No, why? Oh, I was just wondering. They used to go around on camels, you know. In Australia? It's British. Well, British or not, they used them for the desert bit. Ideal, they were tailor-made for the job. All those great, threatening, empty spaces. I don't think I feel safe there. Do you fancy travelling, can I mean? There's nothing stopping you now, is there? Only the cash. Oh. I'll live tomorrow, give me half a chance. You say that, but where would you go? Oh, I'm not pussy. Just so long as it's away from here, eh? <laughs> I'll tell you what, then, can if you fancy it. We'll get a little Land Rover, a couple of smart birds that can cook, and we'll uh, be on our way, eh? <laughs> I'm not leaving, not if you paid me. No, indeed. Cotswolds in the spring. Mm. Lake District in the autumn. Weatherfield in November. I'd even miss that, Fred. I'd not. <laughs> Right, come sit down here then. There you get a minute. Oh, nothing changes. Still the same old faces. Oh, Mums, when did you get here, love? I thought I'd come and see my granddaughter. Oh, it's your little pet. Yeah. Hey, you look smashing, oh, kid. You don't look so bad yourself. Mm. Hello, Ken. Hello. Everything all right? Yes, it's fine, thanks. Good to see you back again. Oh, sure, yeah. love. I'll have uh, two gin and tonics and a pint, love, please. Right, lovey. Come to see her granddaughter, indeed. She's come to read the riot act, mm. if I know. I've been expecting her. Oh. Hello, Mrs. Walker. <coughs> Hello, dear. How very nice to see you. Don't worry. Hey, listen, before she comes back, about tonight. What about it? Well, you can't sleep on the settee, not with her there. No, I suppose not. Well, you better come back then. With you? Yeah. Right. It was you walking down the street. How are you, love? I'm sorry about Ernest. Yes. You're looking very well. I were. Oh, I only just heard today myself. Oh, I thought it was just me they'd kept it from. Deirdre says it's her idea. Oh, yes. Does she? I can't understand it. I thought she was that settled, dear. Yes. 
Then why should she suddenly throw it all up and emigrate? Oh, I've no idea, Blanche. I've no idea at all. Well, I suppose I'll be seeing you. Bye. <laughs> Two gin and tonic, love. One pint coming up. Uh, yeah, thanks. <coughs> Have you got onions? Yeah. Oh, that's supposed to be all right. Oh. In your mouth, Trace. Honestly, sometimes I think that kid's a bit slow on the uptake. Slow be blowed. Any more of that and they can leave you at home with me, can't they, eh? Hey, I bet there's another thing you've not thought of in all this. Oh, I thought we'd agreed to drop the subject. Well, you might have. I haven't. I mean, my only daughter's emigrating, and you expect me to go around making small talk, is that yeah, it? Yeah, all right, all right. What is it we've not thought of now? Just the small matter of her education. Well, they do have schools in New Zealand, you know. Yeah, but what sort? Oh, whatever sort they are, they'd be a damn sight better than any round here, that's for sure. Yeah, smaller classes and all. Yeah, more chance of a job after. A lot more chance. If you ask me, that's exactly what it is, a chance. Now, taking chances with your own lives is one thing, but taking chances with traces is another. It's not a chance, ma'am. For the last time, it's an opportunity. Look, it's a chance. In other words, a risk. The only risk is if we don't like it. And in that case, we can always come back, can't we? To what? I mean, you'll have burnt your boats, won't you? Besides, there are plenty of good opportunities round here. You've both got jobs. Lovely home, friends. Ma'am. Family. We've been through all this. Endlessly. Fed up with going over the same old ground and of her churning over the same objections. I'm fed up to hear. Honestly, when you two get together. Anyway, just just leave it for now, will you, Mum? If and when I get a few straight answers with pleasure. Oh, for the hundredth and last time. We just want to change. We want to see the world. Where's the mystery in that? Well, then take a holiday. Go on a cruise. Oh, yeah, with five quid in the bank. You must have more than that. I doubt it. I doubt if it even goes up into the double figures. Well, what happened to all the money Ray got? What money? Well, all this overtime you said had been putting in. Well, it got spent, didn't it? Anyway, just, just leave it, will you, Mum? I mean, make yourself useful and take Tracy for a walk while I do these pots. Maybe if I asked Emily Bishop, she'd give me a few answers. What's Emily Bishop got to do with it? Oh, just so much she didn't say in the pub yesterday. What do you mean, didn't say? When I asked her why she thought you were emigrating, she couldn't get out of that pub fast enough. Well, you know Emily. As if she didn't want to talk about it. Well, she's probably upset that we're going. She'll miss Tracy. She thinks a lot about Tracy. Well, so will I miss her. Oh, she wasn't like somebody upset. More, uh, more embarrassed. As if she found the subject embarrassing. Honestly, this is getting more like the third degree every minute. I told you, Deirdre, I want a few straight answers. All right, walk away, but I mean to get them. And I mean to get a bit of peace. So stop looking for trouble where there isn't any. Just let it go, Mum, will you? Just let it go. How's that Henderson order? We're still behind. Uh, end of the week, Ivy reckons. Yeah, I've heard that before. Look, get on to him, will you? Crack the whip a bit. Well, there's no problem. It's over halfway through. Well over. Yeah, we're halfway through the week, aren't we? I keep telling you, son, you can't sit back and relax. You've got to keep at him and... Well, what's this, well, it's Bradley's revised order. Carol's just found it through. Well, it's 50% up on the original. It's more. I did a good job there. You did? Well, who showed around, took her for a drink? I had a long chat with her, didn't I? Yeah, she did say you hinted something about a job. I did. Do you mind me asking what doing? Sales rep. If she's half as good at selling as she is at buying, she'll be a definite asset. No, I can't argue with that. So sound convinced? No, it's just that I remember you turning Elsie down when she wanted to sell for us. You reckoned you could do all the selling that was required? Yeah, but we've expanded since then. I can't handle it anymore. Anyway, Carol's a different kettle of fish to Elsie, isn't she? Oh, yeah. She's uh, younger, prettier. Smarter. Looks and age, you've got nothing to do with it. In so much as they help her do her job better, which they do. A pretty face can launch a thousand orders. It's the way of the world. <laughs> do you know, you could talk your way out of a hanging. Yeah, hopefully. Look, uh, get on to Ivy, will you? Tara, I want a progress report on the Henderson order and I want it today. And if she can't guarantee it, by the end of the week, Sir, I've got a factory in London that can. Right? You're the boss. Precisely. Oh, get me Brad Islam. Bind it, Pond.
Oh, hello. Could I speak to Miss Carol Gordon, please? Oh, Miss Gordon. Mr. Baldwin. Mike. No. No, nothing at all. I've, I've got it here. Oh, well, thanks a million. I'm just full of admiration. I'd like to buy you a drink sometime. Like today. Lunchtime would be perfect. Right. Yeah, OK. See you then, then. Bye. Is hard at it. Oh, hello, Blanche. Remember when washing day used to be on Monday? It's any day that suits now. It's my day off, supposedly. Out for a walk? Oh, just done a bit of shopping for Deirdre. I was going to take Tracy with me. But the second we set out that door, she started howling fit to burst. Mind you, she's not that used to me. Thought I was making off with her poor little mite. She's at that age, isn't she? Clingy. God knows what'll happen when they go to New Zealand. I mean, she'll not even recognise me then. No, but if it's really what they want, Ray and Deirdre... I'm not all that sure that it is, frankly. I mean, anywhere seems to do them. Australia, New Zealand, anywhere. They just want to get away. The quicker, the better. Well, if they've made up their minds, there's not much point in delaying it, is there? Emily. Yes? Is there more to this than meets the eye? More than they're saying? How would I know, Blanche? I just think you do, that's all. Really, I, I'm not privy to the reasons why they're emigrating. I just know they are, and like you, I'm very sad about it. I still say you know more than you're letting on. What's been going on, Emily? I'm really quite browned off with being quizzed about Ray and Deirdre. It's none of my business, and I'd rather not get embroiled in the whole... The whole what, Emily? I'd rather not get mixed up in it. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have quite a lot of work to do. You better want to make this an official complaint. Won't keep you sick, love. Look, I'm not interested in your excuses, chum. All I'm interested in is this load of tack you sent me and what you're going to do about it. Well, it's not good enough. I want a new supply. I'm washed, unmarked, and unsold, and I want it today. Otherwise, I'll cancel my order and my check, right? <laughs> Sorry about that. Problems? Nah, nothing I can't handle. Well, is there anything? Uh, what? You can't handle. Not much. And it's no use pussyfooting around, is it? Not if you want results. Not at all. Come on in, tell me. How's the big, bright world of Bradley's today? Oh, bustling. Nah, it's not really, is it? Not all that bright, are they? Oh, look, Mike, don't expect me to knock Bradley's. I mean, they gave me my chance and they pay me very well. Their name won't cross my lips again. Come on in. Let's go and have that drink, shall we? Well, I have earned it. The way you look, darling, you can have it for nothing. Now he tells me. <laughs> Here, I'll try this for size. Best ham cream I've ever had. Oh, thank you. I don't normally bother, but now I'm working at the cafe. I can't very well have red hands, can I? No, of course you can't. Anyway, try it. See what you think. I'll get you some for you if you like. Oh, well, thank you very much. Can I help you? Huh? Oh, yeah. Ray Langton. Does he still work around here? Oh, yes. Uh, yard. Next street to this. Yard? It's uh, like a builder's yard, you know. Oh, still in that game, is he? Fancy. Still. If he likes it. He's a partner, actually. Only a partner? Can I have about a chockey, love? Yes. That. Street behind this, you said? Yes, that's right. The original Flash Harry, no less. Isn't he? Right then. Name your poison, love. Uh, tomato juice. And? And nothing. Sorry, house rule. No hard stuff while I'm on duty. Who <laughs> said we were on duty? Oh, well, in that case, I'll have vodka in it. Right, a Bloody Mary, Fred. No, I just got you, mate. Right. How do? Oh, hello. So, uh, this is to be strictly social, is it? Did you think it'd be anything else? Well, I have my suspicions. Well, call it a bit of a mixture, then. Business and pleasure. Well, that's another rule of mine. They don't. Uh, don't what? Mix. At least not in my experience, they don't. Well, there's always a first time, darling. Yeah, and rules are made to be broken. I've heard that one before as well. <laughs> hey. Oh, 
room for a little one. Hello, Blanche. Of course. Help yourself, love. What are you going to have, love? Uh, I'll have a small gin, please. Can I have a small gin down here, Fred, please? Coming up, sunshine. I'm glad I've seen you. I was hoping for a word. Oh, I About this daft business of Deirdre and Ray emigrating. Aye, we think it's daft and all. Well, I've tried talking to them. Will they listen? Oh, what puzzles me is what started it all. <laughs> I mean, some of us to put the idea in Deirdre's head. I suppose so. Everything's been all right at work, has it? Down at Yard? Oh, we had a bad patch, yeah. Well, I thought that would be behind you. Oh, it is. And there's been no bad feeling of out like that? Not as I know of. Yeah. Tell me. Sir. What is the reason, then, then? Why are they leaving? Well, how should I know? Well, if you don't know, who does? You're his flaming partner, aren't you? I'm sorry. I'm, I'm a bit wound up. Obviously. But I wouldn't be, would I, though, if folk could tell me the truth? That's a matter of opinion. Rita. What does that mean? Look, we're not saying any more. It's not us you should be talking to, it's them. Right. Thanks for nothing. Very determined lady. She's going to kill Langton, you know, when she finds out why they really immigrated. And she will. <laughs> Nothing changes, does it? I don't believe it. Jim Douglas? One and only. Can you afford a secretary? Well, we only just got rid of one and I haven't got round to getting another yet. The last time I heard of you, you was hot footing it round Germany. That's right. Fair Clough and Langton, eh? When did that happen? Uh, four years since. Five, maybe. Been that long, has it? It's been longer. It must be nearly six years since I last saw you, you and. Hey, with Maddox Bricky in. Oh, what a two bob outfit they were. Not anymore, mate. They packed it in a couple of months since. Laid everybody off and sold up. I know. It was my company bought him. Your company? Well, the one I represent, put it that way. My card, as they say. Oh, sight agent, eh? Can't be bad. How do you manage to swing this? In Holland. Amsterdam, to be exact. I thought you were in Germany. I was, for the first couple of years. Then I heard of this job in Amsterdam. Well, just outside. This outfit needed a bricky foreman, and I convinced him I was the lad for the job. It's all happening there, mates. I kid you not. Under a year, they made us a ganger. Six months later, site foreman. Onwards and upwards, eh? Absolutely. So, what brings you back here? Oh, strictly temporary. They shifted me to their office over here. Middleton Way. They're doing some development there. Factory stuff, mostly. Prefab systems, you know. It's a doddle, mate. Like doing a kid's jigsaw puzzle. And you're a site agent for him, eh? Yep. Which brings me to why I'm here also. Thought I might be able to do you a bit of good. We're short of a plumbing contractor. Little annex we're doing on an engineering works. Cross me mind, you might like to tender for it. All a gumph. Not one of our bigger jobs, but it shall bring in a fair whack. Oh, no, thanks very much, mate. It's good of you to think of it. Give us a ring if you fancy it. No rush. Tender dates aren't even fixed yet. You know, I half expected to find you'd shut up shop and all. Well, we have come close to it once or twice, mate, I can tell you. Happening all over, innit? All over England, at any rate. Firms going bankrupt. Well, there's not enough work to go round, is there? You happy about things here? No, but, well, it doesn't matter much now. I'm packing it in, mate. Me and the wife and the kid, we're, uh, we're emigrating to New Zealand. Well, well. Got some sense at last. Yeah, we should have done it years since. Bit of it all, though, mate. New Zealand. Well, you've got to go where the work is, mate. Things aren't as good as they were down under. Don't you read the papers? You trying to frighten me? I was just giving you the facts. But there'd be no problem about work in Holland. I've still got contacts there. And I'm telling you, you'll not better the brass. No way. This isn't off the peg, you know. Uh, leave them, will you? Oh, Just for a minute. I've got a million to do. I said leave them for a minute. You're not going to start again, are you? If you mean am I going to get to the bottom of this thing, yes, I oh, am. Ma'am. Look, Deirdre, one question. Just answer one question and then we'll drop it. I promise. All right, what's the question? Has something happened between you and Ray? What's give you that daft notion? Oh, I've just been putting two and two together, that's all. 
Well, has it? No. Satisfied? No, I'm not. Far from it. Now what are you doing? Well, if you won't tell me the truth, I'll just have to see if Ray will, won't you I? You can't go barging in on him at work. Can't I just? Look, it's none of your business, Mum. It's got nothing to do with you. None of my business? You stand there and say it's none of my business? Well, what am I supposed to do? Wave you off to New Zealand with a smile, not knowing why you're going or what you're trying to hide from me, the pair of you? Listen, you're making something out of nothing, Mum. You are, really. Nothing's happened between me and Ray. Honest. I'd be very careful before bandering that word about, Deirdre. Very careful. It's the truth. The truth, she says. I've had nothing but a pack of lies since I came through that door. And you know it. When? When have I told you a lie? Just tell me one lie that I've told you. I'm not an idiot, Deirdre, so will you please stop treating me as one? I'm your mother, remember? I've got a right to know, if only to stop me worrying. And what if it has the opposite effect? What if it, what if it makes you worry more? You're the second person that said that to me this morning. Emily? No, Rita. You've left no stone unturned, have you? Oh, they didn't tell me anything definite. Just hints. We had a row. What about? Does it matter? Well, it must have been about something. Well, you know all this overtime he said he was doing? Yes. Well, he wasn't. Go on. He... Spit it out, Deirdre. He met this girl. What girl? Uh, just some girl. She worked in a cafe around the corner. And? And what? Want me to spell it out for you? They had an affair. Romantic interlude, whatever you want to call it. Now are you satisfied? I was uh, wondering where you two had got to. Well, now you know. How's it uh, going? Why don't you ask the lady? Oh, fine. The conversation's been uh, somewhat varied, you might say. Problems of the self-employed, industrial relations, and uh, what makes a good sales rep. Ah, well, that's brains, looks and youth, in that order. Right, Mike? I'll go along with that. And do I qualify, then? Well, you're good-looking. And I'm only 25. <laughs> well, it's two out of three. Gosh. <laughs> He's playing games with you, you know. He does it all the time. Steve? Yeah? The camera's on bloody mirrors and I'm on large cut. You sign the expenses. He'll be telling you where to go one of these days. Yeah, one day, but not yet. Steve's right, though. You are playing games with me. Any objections? No. I just wish that fat fellow behind the bar would stop staring at me. That's easily remedied. What's your vital statistics? 34, 22, 36. Fred, 34, 22, 36. <laughs> and I'm not talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Yeah. Well, thanks very much, mate. I'll not forget it. Up to you now. Keep me posted. I'll do that. Cheers. What can I do for you, mother-in-law? I've been talking to Deirdre. Oh, I. Not a breakthrough or something. She told me all about it, Ray. About you and this, uh, whatever her name is. Did she? All a bit squalid, wasn't it? A bit grubby. I'm not going to discuss it with you, Blanche. I've said all I have to say on the subject of Deirdre. Oh, yes. I heard you came clean about it. What a touching and noble little scene that must have been. You've no idea, have you? No idea how contemptible you are. Well, aren't you going to tell me, then? I mean, that is what you're here for, isn't it? I'll tell you why I'm here. I'm here to warn you that I shall do everything in my power to stop Deirdre going away with you. And Tracy, come to that. Best of British. You'll need it. Anything else? You really are a louse, aren't you? I warned her, you know. I told her the day she married you would be the sorriest day of her life, and by God, I've been proved right. You've waited a long time to say that, haven't you, Blanche? Eh? A very long time. The pity of it is that she wouldn't listen to me. But she's going to now. So help me, she is. You finished? No. Now, I'm going to tell you somewhat, Blanche. I'm sorry for what I did. It was stupid and crazy. But I've learned my lesson. Because I nearly lost her. And that would have been very hard to take.
Right, grab yourself a pew. I'll rustle up some coffee. Has he uh, said anything yet? I'm beginning to wonder if he's ever going to. Well, about a job, anyway. Oh, I'm telling you, it's in the bag. He'll probably tell you about it over dinner tonight. Well, I've got a date tonight. He won't like that. Now, what do you want? Uh, nothing. Good luck, Carol. Why does he think you need good luck? Well, uh, he... Yeah, all right, don't tell me. I wasn't born yesterday. Well, not quite. He's already told you, isn't he? He says you want me to come and work here. That's right, I do. As a sales rep? Yeah, and when you're not on the road, the odd office job, if and when it comes up. Well, I'm not the world's best secretary. Look, I'll match whatever you get now, plus 10%. And expenses, of course. I'd have to work out my notice at Bradley's. Naturally. OK. Well, don't you want to think about it? No. Oh, bold you off your feet a bit, am I? You have rather. Yeah, I'm like that. So that's the only thing that worries me. Emigrating isn't the answer, Deirdre. It isn't. I just don't want to talk about it anymore. What if it happens again? If he meets another girl? It won't happen again. Look, you can't be sure, Deirdre. He's done it once. He just might fancy doing it, it again. It won't happen. If it's a fresh start you want, then leave him now while you've got the chance. Mums. I'm talking sense. Mum, please. Untie, Deirdre. Untie. My fan club meeting again, is it? You always were a sarky so-and-so. Witty. She's not going to New Zealand, Ray. Is that a fact? Well, neither am I, for that matter. Not going. New Zealand's out, so you can forget about it. Why have you changed your mind? Because I've decided we're going to Holland instead. Holland? What are you talking about? It's a mate of mine, Jim Douglas. He's just got back from Holland, and he reckons he can get me a job there before Christmas. Sooner, even. All I've got to do is call him back as soon as you've okayed it. Well? What's the difference? New Zealand, Holland... Well, shut up! I'm talking to me wife here. Your wife? You never thought about said, your shut wife. shut up! It's all we want, love. Good job for me. An house for you and Tracy. It's not so far away we can't come back and visit, but it's still far enough for, well, for you to forget and for us to start again. Well, am I going to call him back or not? All right. We'll go to Holland. Sorry, Mum. I've got to try. Yeah. Hello, could I speak to Jim Douglas, please? Oh, Jim, it's uh, Ray, Ray Langton. Well, the answer's a lollipop, mate. You're on. Skin, you coming in this time? I'm not late, love. It's you skiving off early. Oh, well, we've got to do at dinner time, you know. Oh, they flogged it then. Who too, do you know? Yeah, young couple it is. Very respectable looking. Not local then, eh? No, I don't think so. Mm. What do they get for it? Well, I've not heard, but if you ask me, they've dropped their price. They must have done to sell it so quick. Oh, they'll always be able to flog these houses. Mm. They're the only sort folk can afford. Yeah, I just hope they'll be able to afford one over in Holland. Oh, I know they make terrific money, but it's terrific prices and all. Oh, it's very dear over there, the price of everything. I didn't know you'd been. Well, they come over here, the Dutch. They do. They come over on the boat just to do their shopping. Even flying over. Oh, well, in that case, that we'll be seeing them again. That way they'll have the best of both worlds. <laughs> Makes you sick, doesn't it? After big coffee, pack the teapot. Oh, ta. I think you've almost done, haven't you? Hmm. Takes it out of you. It's amazing how much stuff you've got. Isn't it? Hey, listen, Mummy, are you sure you've got enough room at your place? Oh, don't worry, we'll find room. No use paying storage. Oh, maybe we ought to. It doesn't cost that much. You'll need every penny. Now, look, it's no trouble to me, so shut up. Don't it look... I don't know. Unlived in already. Oh, I know. It's the worst thing of moving. Seeing your house sort of all took apart. Sort of cold. Like wreckage. I know what you mean, love. Mind you, if you knew where you're going, it would have been better. I mean, you could have had that in your mind, you know. Yeah. The thing to do, don't spend any more time than you have to looking at it. Because it is depressing. 
So you want to get down to Rovers and say all your goodbyes? I don't really want to go to the Rovers at all. Well, you'll have to. I'd sooner just go. Well, you can't. Now, you've got to say goodbye to everybody, else they'll think you're very funny. Don't let it get cold. Mm. Taking the cur curtains, are they? Ah, uh, yeah. Curtains and carpets, 200, we said. Well, I suppose it's all right. Yeah, them in bedroom are worth 100 on their own, more. Oh, much better selling them all together. Start again, completely fresh. Yeah, you can start again. You can never be completely fresh, though, can you? Going over to the Rovers lunchtime? Shouldn't think so, why? Oh, it's, uh, what's his name's going to Holland? Uh, just a drink to see him off. Who's going to Holland? Well, Ray, what's it, and, uh, Deirdre. Oh, Deirdre Langton, the good-looking bird with a kid. Mm. Is she going to Holland? Wake up, he's got a job out there. Yeah, well, he can go anywhere, but it's a pity about her, though, isn't it? Excuse me asking, but does anything else ever cross your mind apart from the other? <laughs> you think I'm obsessed with sex, do you? Yeah, that and making money. Well, not far off. I mean, I go together, don't they? My business is putting clothes on women. My interest, on the other hand, is completely different. Yeah, but a closely related field of activity. Got to specialise somewhere, haven't you? What's it like being a fella that can handle women? Rewarding. I don't suppose there's any risk of you ever getting big-headed about it. No chance. Too much like our word for that. Mind you, uh, eh. I reckon Elsie's going to be a bit tricky. Elsie? Well, over this lark, taking Carol Gordon on. Well, what's he going to do with Elsie? Like I keep telling you, she wanted to be the sales rep, didn't she? Travel the country. She's going to be narked in the extremes. Nothing we can't end. Well, and in addition, there's Carol. Well, she is a bit tasty, isn't she? So there's going to be trouble there if you're not very careful. And you think that's why I'm after her? Wrong. You mean something else crossed your mind? You really believe she's going to be a business asset as well? Of course I do. She's good, she's sharp, and she's going to be very useful. So when does she start? Who said she hadn't already started? Well, she couldn't have served a notice yet. I'm talking about being useful. And that reminds me, it's about time I found her. So when you finish your coffee... Oh, can't I stay and listen? I might acquire some uh, skills myself. Practice on Ivy. Tell her we want that stuff out by Thursday. Oi! And the creative doodling. <laughs> oh, get me Brad with his gun, will you? Uh, yeah, Mr. Oh, Carol, yeah. Uh, look, I was just sitting here thinking, uh, what's your appetite like? <laughs> no. No, I was thinking about dinner. Uh, hang on. Right, well, we've got a red carpet, a suite of offices, Steve's baking a cake, so when are you going to come and work for me? Morning. Morning. Oh, Lord, don't trouble yourself. It's not all that important. Well, I'm sure it's among this lot somewhere. We're looking for a knitting pattern. Anyway, it brought with it in. Well, I'm looking for volunteers. You do a lot of that, don't you? Now, could I be looking at a volunteer? Oh, I'm sorry, Kay. I'm not the type. Far too selfish. Ask anybody. Well, one day in the distant future, you too will be an old age pensioner. You're trying to upset me. <laughs> what is it you're after, Kenneth? No! You might be looking at a volunteer there. One of nature's own. You mean I'm easily put on, don't you? Well, between the two of you, you could eat it. Oh, it's rather a felicitous choice of words, that. Well, eat what? Well, I'm trying to feed about 30 pensioners. They're going to a matinee, then it's back to the centre for a bit of a meal, you know, a social evening, that sort of thing. So what's your problem? Well, it's the supper. For 30 people? Ah, yes, but they're not big eaters, are they? Oh, well, why don't you get caterers in? Well, and kick a hole in my budget, which is looking between you and me pretty moth-eaten already. Well, you haven't got any facilities there, have you? A sink and a stove. Oh, exactly. I mean, five loaves and two fishes would be a start, but a sink and a stove? Well, what he wants is a bit of organisation, that's all. Ah, and some idiot to do it. Well? Oh, I'm sorry, Ken. I wouldn't know where to start. I'll come and do a comic turn for you, if you like. But the catering, no. Well, you've got the experience. The only catering experience I've got is cutting up barn cakes. That's the girl you want. Oh, I couldn't do it. Mavis, you're hiding your light. Tell him about your qualifications. I haven't got any. <gasps> well, I did a course in bookkeeping at night school, that's all. What about your badges? What badges? You told me that you were a girl guide and you'd got woodcraft badge, knobs, swimming, Cook's badge. See? Cook's badge. 
She's your girl. Don't be silly, really. Well, think about it, Mavis. I mean, I think it's important to, to get these old folks out in the winter, you know. I mean, a lot of them live alone, and the days are long and dark and dreary. I think it's important to sort of mix them up with a bit of life, you know, give them a bit of fun and, um, well, maybe a squarish meal. I, I don't need to have to tell you what a difference it would make, do I? Think about it. Oh. Bye, Ken. I'm sorry. It's not there. Oh, 30 is an awful lot, though. Well, it only requires organisation. Yeah, and some idiot to do it. Ah, but an idiot with a heart of gold. What would you give them? Stew? Oh, what would you do it in? Hey, now you're asking me. Hey, just hang on, though. How many people could you feed on five gallons of stew? Hundreds. Oh, just make a pint each. That'd be 40, wouldn't it? What yeah, well, we could do five gallons of stew easy. Oh. Yeah, you know what? Them big boilers, they hold five gallons, like Deirdre does a nappies in. Oh, terrific. And what happened to your guide troop? Wiped out with dysentery. <laughs> oh. oh, we are hammered. Posh little butties. Keep your arms off. Why, are they only for show? Gift wrapped, aren't they? We don't get them for a darts match. Hello, uh, just a tiny half, please, eh? Where's Ratface? Is he coming? Uh, tied up. Huh. Should be an all tied up and chucked in court. Give him my love. I'll tell you. Where's the lad then? Oh, he's just gone round to fetch Deirdre. He'll be here in a second. Well, I'm still at home. No trouble about Tracy. I'm keeping an eye on her in the living room. Oh, aye. She'll be here, I think. Hey, would you like to sign that? Book? What a practical idea. What is it? Let's teach yourself Dutch, some of them to read on the journey, eh? I've got to do it myself, it's impossible. <laughs> well, they all talk English over there, don't they? Of course, it's easier, isn't it? Yeah. Just leave it behind the bar, love. We'll give it to them when they're going, eh? Have I got a tie? Yeah, I've left one out for you. Where? On the bed, I told you. Well, it's not there. Oh, for God's sake, Ray. Keep an eye on Tracy. You're all right, are you, Tracy? Yeah, of course you are, aren't you? Hey. Oh, got your business all sorted out then? Everything. She's a bit on edge, isn't she? Well, not surprising. Aye, we better when we're on his way, really. She's very down with all this. Well, she's had a lot to do. Yes, I don't mean that. It's just that well, on top of everything else. I mean, she's had to start dismantling her only home she's got. I suppose we are homeless, aren't we, Tracy? Hey? Still. Only temporary, though, isn't it? Still think you'd have been better going first. We've got to stick together. That's what it's about. Oh, you've learnt that, have you? Well, I don't start. You've done very well for yourself these past few days. I know. Oh, where was it? Staring in the face. Sir. Ah, uh, listen, Ray. Yeah. You go down to the row, because I don't feel like it. I want to see you. Yeah, well, I don't want to see them. It's their idea. We've got to. The only thing we've got to do is go. Oh, go on, love. You need to go. Look, I, I just don't feel as if I could face it. It's only Len and Rita and a few of the others. Yeah, I know. Well, you go. You go and have a drink with them and say my goodbyes for me. Oh, don't be ridiculous. Get your coat on. Look, I've said. I'm, I've said we're going down the rovers. What are you going to do? Drag me? No, you two. Are you? Look, get your coat on. No! That's right. Yell at her. That's exactly what she needs. Is there anything you can do? I'll talk to her. Your mum's not very happy, is she, Tracy? Eh? Yeah. Hey? No. No. <laughs> tulips, tulips, all the way. Love, Hilda. <laughs> Ick, gaff, de better laugh, but gelt. I gave the beggar some money. Useful stuff, there, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, just stick your moniker on there, eh? We're only waiting for the beggar to turn up now, aren't we? to take her round to Sandra's. Oh, no, I might as well. Anyway, she's probably stayed in and expecting us. Come on, love, here's your toys. See you in five minutes. All right. Hey. <sighs> well, it's a miserable blooming sight in this state, isn't it, eh? But do you want to go straight to the airport, or what? 
I want you to go to the Rovers. How can I go on my own? Of course you can. Can you say why it is you don't want to go, love, is it? I'm upset. Yeah. Well, you're going to be all right in Holland. I have another word with Jim. He says it's fantastic. Is it because you think, like, well, they all know why we're going and... I don't know. I, I don't think so. Maybe. Well, let's just get round there and bloody show them. Come on, kid. Please. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> you better go and see him. Look, here. Oh, no, Anki. Go on. Do we need there's a pub full of folk waiting for you? It's a bit tricky, you know. Oh, there's no show without punch, is no, there? It's Deirdre, she's. Are you alright, love? She's uh, just been having a little cry, that's all. Oh, yeah. Of course you have. And so you should. It'll pass. Are you coming down then? Oh, yeah, all right. I'll just go and put my face on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, didn't realise you were tied up. Oh, don't worry, coming. This is a social visit. Come on. Unfortunately, I'm sorry. Don't be. Look at it this way. I've done you a favour, even though I didn't mean to. Well, I can't deny it. I'm very grateful. Of course you are. And so you should be. You've made the right decision, believe you me. Decision? Uh, what decision is this, then? I can't persuade her to join us. You what? Must be losing me touch. <laughs> I hope this isn't going to warp your personality, turn you all moody and sullen. Oh, well, we just have to wait and see, won't we? <laughs> oh, that'll be the day. Look, I must be going. I just wanted to drop in and tell you personally. Well, you leave me disappointed, but not heartbroken. Good. Oh, uh, you're still having dinner with me tonight, aren't you? Well, nobody's cancelled it so far. And no one's going to. When should I pick you up? Well, do you think I could meet you somewhere? It'll be easier. Yeah, terrific. I'm bound to be held up here anyway. What do you say? The white bull in town? Oh, fine. Oh, look, don't show me out. You make me feel like a buyer. All right, then. <laughs> the white bull about seven, eh? See ya. See ya. Oh, why'd she turn it down? Because she went to Bradley's office on notice and he made her the most famous offer, the one you can't refuse. So she's staying at Bradley's. So it's a bit of a blow, then? What is? Well, you're not getting her. Do you reckon? I didn't think we could afford her anyway. <laughs> well, then why did you offer her the job? Because I didn't reckon she'd accept it, did I? She's a buyer. Buyers have got power, my son. Rep seven. She just used it to squeeze a bit more money out of old Bradley. So everything's terrific. I don't follow. Being able to offer people jobs is a wonderful way of making lasting friendships, both with buyers and beautiful women, preferably both. <laughs> Look, don't worry. When you can follow it, you'll be ready for my job. In the meantime, get over to Fenton's and pick up those waistcoats they're on about, will you? Come on, walk right up. You've gone already. Yeah, well, we would have done if it had been left up to this one. Oh, you mean thing. You wouldn't do us out of a drink, would you? You could always have put it on my sleigh. <laughs> <laughs> Come on now, everybody, it's on me. Oh, no, no, you're not buying around, mate. Well, it's got to be the last one I'll ever buy in here, so give us that pleasure, will you? All right, you can. You can buy the very last one, the last one. Well, they'll all be on scotch with that. That's all right. This one is on me. Right, I'll start on scotch. Right, Deirdre? Uh, oh, just a lager, please. Will you get them all round, please, darling? Uh, was Rita got? Ah, uh, she's still in bed, love. Flew, I think. Oh, I'm wrong. Well, Chuck, it's very sad to be losing you. Thank you, sweetheart. Both of you, and I mean. Because it's, well, it's like a bit of a family round here, isn't it? Oh, I know we have us tips and that, but we do get on, and that's the important thing. So it really is like seeing family go. Any road, best of luck, and God bless you both. Thank you very much, Hilda. Very kind of you. Grab all the bets, we'll see you all right. Oh, Ta. I'll be drinking to your good fortune and your future happiness. Oh, Ta. Support and lemon, please. Right. I think she really does mean that, you know. Yeah. And so do I. I couldn't possibly express it any better than Mrs. Ogden. Or Mr. Bowes. And I very much miss Tracy. Well, when we're settled in, you can come and babysit for us. This plane's going over all the time. I might just take you up on that. What do you say, love? Yeah. Well, we seem to have saved something from the vultures. Feel free. Oh. You've not had nothing yet, love, have you? Come on. I'm not really very hungry. Oh, come on. No, I'm not. Thank you. They managed to persuade you then? Yeah, well, uh, Rainy come round between us, like, you know. No, nothing. 
Only it seems a bit remote at the moment. Well, I shouldn't have been. I think I know what it is. Yes, I was on the point of emigrating once. Well, we were on the point of emigrating once. And I was in here on that night, too. Not something to dwell on, Kevin. Not at someone else's party, anyway. Right, has everybody got a drink in there? hand? Oh, speech, speech! Yeah, speech. <laughs> Come on. No, no, no. Oh, don't encourage him. He'll go on all day. <laughs> no, I'm not going to make any speeches. Speeches are what they have at weddings and funerals and public meetings and the House of Commons and all that. No, there's no going to be no speeches here. Oh, good. But I would like to say a couple of words to my two friends before they go. See, it is going to be a speech, uh, then. Well, let yeah. him get on with it. Go on, Len. Yeah. You see, you two, you lot are losing two friends, aren't you? And, in fact, I'm losing two friends. Three, really. And if you think it's a bit of a wrench losing a, a friend, it's absolute murder breaking up a partnership, I tell you that. Because, uh, according to the date on the papers, uh, I've been professionally wed to this fella for what? N oh, no, about in a couple of months now. It's about nine years, isn't it, now, that I've been professionally wed to this fella. But since that, we've both been involved in other partnerships. Him and Deirdre, me and Rita. And it's been going from strength to strength. And I'll tell you something, he's learned a bit about plumbing in that time. Oh. <laughs> and when you consider that he served his apprenticeship to Harry Roberts in Paradise Street, that's amazing. <laughs> but now, you see, it's ambition. I'm not big enough for him now. There's no challenge for him here. But in Holland, when they get a leak, they certainly spring a leak, don't they? <laughs> and when he's learned that that fellow who stuck his finger in the dike is retiring because he's getting on a bit now, he just jumped at the opportunity. <laughs> so the next time they ever leak in Holland, <laughs> he's going to be there. <laughs> and he's only going to hope it's happening on a Sunday and all. <laughs> well, look, I'm going to shut up now, except to wish you the best of luck, whatever you do, on behalf of all of us. We're going to miss you, you know. Here's luck to you. And just to remember us by, I think you can take this with you. Oh, well, yeah. thanks very much, mate. Thanks, all of you, very much. Right. We'll meet again. Don't know where, don't know where. Hey, Ray, I thought we will see you. We'll meet again. Don't know where, don't know where. Hey, Ray, Oh, I don't know about you. I'm starving here. I've uh, got to go and get Tracy. I'll go and get Tracy. Eat something. Yeah, thanks. Huh. It's happening again, Mum. What is? It's, it's like waking up. What do you mean? Well, it, it's like when I was engaged to Billy Walker. Do you remember? Of course I remember. I mean, I, I'm, I nearly married Billy. You got the, the dress made and everything. It was that close. I don't think it'll do any good thinking back to that. No, I'm not. It's, it's just that it's the same feeling. It, it's like panic. Only it's not panic, it's... It's more like surprise. I mean, everything's going on around me and suddenly I realise it's my life that's going on. I mean, what am I doing going to Holland? It's like... It's like waking up on a train, it's exactly that feeling. Well, you didn't marry Billy, but you did marry Ray, and that's all the difference. And you're going to Holland because he's got a chance of making something. Well, all right. Maybe he's lucky to have got the chance when he has, because, well, we all know about because. But don't you go telling me you can't forgive him or out like that. It's not a question of forgiving him, is it? Yes, it is. And it's something you've got to do, because he's very frightened that you haven't, and it's shaking him. Well, maybe that's not a bad thing. But it's something you've got to do, and he's got to know. Otherwise, you're just making a nonsense of your life. That's exactly how I feel. Life is always something less than perfection, you know. Life is. People are, including you, and demanding perfection. Well, that's a sure road to misery. I'm sure you're right, Mum. I'm sure you're right. I eat that thing, and I'll be over to see you first chance I get. Hiya. Anybody with for see yet? Yeah, I'll go. You get yourselves organised. Right. Well, I've just been having a last drink with Len down the yard. Been giving me lots of fatherly advice. You probably need it. Ah, he's a great bloke, is Len, you know. He's a great bloke. One thing he never said in that little speech. When he first gave me a job, he had to sack me after three weeks. Do you know that? 
worked out, though, didn't it? Going for Tracy. Right. I'll come and get me back down. Hey, we're practically on his way. You know all about that. Do you uh, want to pack that in yours? I'm not going. Did I hear you right? I said, I'm not going. Any minute now. Well, how about time to give her a little surprise going away present? Oh, I think so. Oh. Come and see what Auntie Emily's got for you. Well, I won't keep her a minute. Right, love. Just see so she doesn't get dirty. Oh, don't worry, I will. Come on, love. I'll see what Auntie Emily's got for you. You can't not go, not now. I can, and I'm not. But it's all arranged. Everything's arranged. We've sold the house as good as. I can't help that. They're expecting us in Holland tomorrow. I know. I'm sorry. You're sorry? Is that all you can bloody say? Taxi's here. What's wrong? You won't believe it. You won't. You just won't believe it. Believe what? She says she's not going. She's not going to Holland. Eh? Hey? Well, that's what she says. But since when? Now, just this minute, and we're all but ready to go. Taxi's here. What's all this about, Deirdre? I'm not going. You see? Daft, dear dream. I'm not going. Oh, she is sorry. Why, at this late hour? Good question. Deirdre? Because I just don't think it'd work. Holland, China, wouldn't make any difference. Because we're finished. That's why. Him and me have... finished. That'll be uh, Emily Bishop with Tracy. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll see to her. We are. We haven't been too long, have we? Emily, love, could you do us a favour? Oh, yes, of course. Uh, something's cropped up. Uh, you couldn't keep Tracy for a bit longer, could you? Of course I could. I'll come round for a when... Right. Uh, is there anything that... No, love, but thanks for offering. Hey, just stay with your Auntie Emily for a few minutes longer, eh, love? Come on, love. Hey. There won't be a minute. Emily's taking her home. Is she all right? Of course she's all right. I don't know what to say. I don't, honestly. Are you sure, Deirdre? Are you absolutely sure you know what you're doing? Yes. It's a bit late, love. It's a bit late in the day. We're only going because of her. I never wanted to go. It was her idea. I'm sorry. Well, it's not good enough just to be bloody sorry. All right, Ray. That sort of attitude isn't going to get us anywhere. Look, Deirdre, love. Shouldn't you give it a try? I mean, you don't know. A, a new life away from here. Well, that's what she said. I want to get away. I want to start afresh, and that's what we're doing. Or we were. Deirdre? It won't work. You said it would. I was wrong. Oh, now she tells me. Look, please, Ray. Shouldn't you have a try at making it work, at least? That's what I've been doing this last few weeks. I've done nothing else. It's, it's no good. I just can't forgive him for what he did. No, that's not... That's not true. I, I have forgiven him, but I can never trust him again. And without trust, that there's no point. You can trust I me. I can't, Ray. Just because of one lousy, rotten slip-up with one bird? Blimey. Even criminals get probation, but not me. Oh, no, I get the chop. Do you call that fair? Because I don't. Do you want my opinion, Deirdre? I think you should make a fresh start in Holland. Just give it a try. You wouldn't be any further back than you are now if it didn't work out. I think you owe it to your marriage to try and save it. I mean, you even owe it to yourself, because you were very happy with Ray before. And you certainly owe it to Tracy. She's right, love. Let's give it a try, eh? I know she's right. I've said all these things to myself. I mean, why do you think I'm sitting here with my bags packed, taxi waiting? I mean, I, I've tried to tell myself it's the right thing to do for, for Tracy's sake as much as anybody else's. Now it's actually come to it and we're ready to go. I just can't talk like that anymore. All I can hear is this voice saying, it's no good. You don't love him anymore. 
it'd be a sham. Better finish it now. And that's what I'm doing. What shall I tell him? That we're not coming. Well, we're not, are we? Hey! Oh, God, well, then my blood runs cold when you come in here like that. Like you've just seen Dracula asking where I live. What's up now? It's the Langtons. What about them? Well, Blanche has just sent the taxi away. I thought they'd have been up the road by now. You sure there was nobody in the taxi? No, it were empty. Well, except for the driver. Well, they'll have got the time wrong or something. Well, perhaps they sent two taxis for the same job. It's not unheard of, you know. Yes, that'll be it. What do you want, Hilda? Light ale, please. No, it's funny, though. Yeah. I wondered if perhaps Deirdre was ill. Or Tracy. I mean, after she's gone down with mumps at the last minute. Yeah. Tell me, Hilda, what do you do when you really want to spread alarm and despondency? Do you run down the street shouting the Russians are coming? No, I remember our Trevor doing that once. What, running down the street? No, you daft ape, getting mumps. It was when we were going to Markham on his holidays. Well, uh, just a few days, really, you know. One September, it was. And I remember... Well, I better be up. Oh, Mark, can I have you, Squire? I could say that, yeah. You know, Lucky for some. Oh. No, it's no luck, Fred. It's charm, good looks and wealth. All of which you just haven't got. See ya. Except you can't smell the sea. Sometimes I think I can do without him. What'll happen if you don't go, Ray? Happen? In Holland, what will they say? They'll curse in flaming Dutch, won't they? Like they've every right to do. But it'd be all right if if you went a few days late, wouldn't it? I'm not going, Mum. Oh, it's like a recitation, isn't it? A flaming recitation. I'm not going, Mum. You're a young fool, Deirdre. Do you know that? So, how do you feel then? Fine. I've not gone into a decline since this afternoon. I can see that. Just making polite conversation, were you? Well, you've got to start somewhere, darling. It's a nice place, this. Hmm. Yeah, not bad. Do you bring all your lady friends here? If I think they're worth it, yeah. Oh, I'm honoured then, am I? Could say that. Oh, Tom. Hope you're hungry. I hope I know. Well, there's no rush, is there? I wish you'd stop looking at me like that. Then you shouldn't look the way you do. You're a snake, really, aren't you, Mike Baldwin? Me? I'm lovely. What's all this in aid of? Oh, what? This, the treatment. I just wanted to take you out, that's all. And the rest? There is no rest. Well, I mean, uh, that depends on what you mean by uh, the rest. Not what you mean. Ah, well, I'm disappointed. I mean, if I wasn't the bar for Bradley... Yeah, go on. Well, would I be here, ask myself? I mean, if you didn't think I could put some business your way. Oh, come on, what do you take me for, darling? A snake. <laughs> Look, you're here because I fancy you. Doesn't matter what you do for a living. I think you're a fanciable bird, and I hope you think I'm a fanciable fellow. Oh, you're yeah, that all right. Right. Let's enjoy yourself, shall we? No strings. Of any sort? No. Well, now I'm disappointed. <laughs> it's not as if it's the other side of the world. It's a day's journey away. If it doesn't work out, if you didn't like it, you could come home easy. Well, I'd come and fetch you. Look, just try it. For a few months, a few weeks even. No, Mum. It's a good marriage, Deirdre, in spite you of... You say that. I say it because I can say it because I was so much against it. But then I saw how happy you were, especially after you had Tracy. I should have listened to you in the first place. It's what you've got to consider. What? Well, what you're throwing away, what you're giving up. I've given it up already. Oh, no, look, not your marriage. I mean, a home, a family, a life together. It can still give you them. Yeah, but they're no good without... You'll find they're the main thing. Yeah, you can say that. You're from a different generation. So, I'm speaking from experience. Look, I, I, I just can't settle for that, Mum. I can't settle for compromise. Not yet, anyway. Love doesn't butter bread. Oh, you don't mean that. You're just saying it because you think it's good advice. It is good advice. Listen. You said that you saw how happy I was. Well, I, I was happy. Blissfully happy. I mean, all them doubts I had when I married Ray, well, they were, they were your doubts mainly. It just seemed ridiculous I'd even entertained him. We were like <laughs> Starsky and Hutch, a team. We used to eat off the same plate. I used to finish his sentences for him, his thoughts even. We had it that much together. 
world outside was something that you just had to waste your time on now and again to earn a living or, or buy food. The real world was here. Him, me and Tracy. Ah, it was perfect. My whole body were laughing from morning till night. And then there were that fella. The real world stuck a fist through one of my windows. But I got over it. It, it wasn't easy. And for a long time, I, I felt different. But I got over it. And then there was her. Janice. I just couldn't believe it. I mean... Call me naive, if you like. I mean, I know anything goes these days, but I just could not believe it. I, I could not understand how he could possibly be unfaithful to me. I was like that fella all over again. My whole body was uh, freezing. My heart was dead. And I won't get over it this time. Because I could understand that fella in a way. But I'll never understand Ray. He had me. And he went to her. Could be because he's a fella. Yeah, I've said that to myself. They are different, aren't they? But not Ray. I loved him too much. How could he be like the rest? How could he? Oh, love. I heard most of that. And I still say I deserve another chance. You seem to think it's very simple. You say it's over. And what about me? I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Jump in the cut, go to Holland on my own. There's nothing to stop you. It wasn't my idea in the first place. Anyway, it's not that simple. For one thing, what about Tracy? What about Tracy? She's as much my child as she is yours. What do you mean by that? Just that. She's as much my child as yours. That'll be Emily with her. I'm not sure what you're getting at, Ray. Just that! I know she's as much your child as she is mine. Just as long as you remember it. children have we got in this street? What child's that? Well, Tracy Langton, who else? I don't seem they have gone wrong. Well, what if they haven't? There's probably a perfectly good explanation for it. We're all standing here like they've been murdered in their beds. Hey, you don't think that's why she were crying, do you? She's the only one left. Hilda, you're at it again. Well, these things do happen, you know. And we all know what's been going on in that house lately. Give us a packet of chewing gum, will you? What do you think's gone wrong, then? How the hell do I know? Anyway, it's their business, isn't it? See you. Don't you think we should be making it our business? I mean, we're good and caring neighbours. Well, supposing Summer has. Well, don't you think one of us should go and see? And you're volunteering, I suppose? Well, I will if you like. I don't mind doing my duty. Don't you go near that house, Hilda. Are you sure you won't have something to eat? A bit of toast? No, thanks. What are you going to do? I don't know. You mean you don't know whether you're going to Holland or not? What's the point? I've done what I can, Ray. I, I tried to tell her. Yeah, you're on my side for a change. That is rich. I just thought it would be best for Deirdre in the long run. I I've got no sympathy for what you did. I ran true to form there, didn't I? I told her I thought you'd made her very happy. I did. Then why did you go and do what you did? Well, you might have known she'd never... You ruined everything. You know... I never gave that girl a thought at first. It was just a bit of excitement. An adventure, if you like, like going out in the dark with a torch when you were a kid. It's, I don't know, it's testing whether you're alive. You have to do it now and then. You're not a kid. You're a grown man. Do you want some breakfast? No, thanks, Mum. So, I can take it it was a very successful evening. Dazzlingly successful. She's some lady. Is she? Well, she's good-looking, good company, and, uh, well, I don't have to draw diagrams, do I? Your place or hers? Well, uh, she's got a nice little flat. 
Small, but uh, cosy, you know what I mean. Yeah, nothing like mixing business with pleasure, eh? That's what it's all about, my son. It's the name of the game. Yeah, but in what proportion? Eh? Well, how much business, how much pleasure? Well, ideally, a lot of pleasure and a modicum of business to pay for it. It's a new Jerusalem, didn't you know? Ah, and you managed to do that? Well, I did last night. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so you reckon she's going to be successful? Uh, uh, I mean, uh, in a business way. Well, I tell you, kid, after last night, she won't be able to help herself. Believe you me. I wish I had half your opinion of yourself. Yeah, I bet you do. Because if you had, you'd have been stepping out with her last night and not me. Yeah. No, I'm definitely going to do it, Ken. I really am. <laughs> Good for you. When the next election comes, I'm going to go to as many meetings as I can and I'm going to ask as many questions as I can. Well, it's our birthright, isn't it? I think everybody should do it, don't you? Oh, absolutely, yes, absolutely. Uh, what sort of questions? Well, if it's a Labour candidate, I shall ask him why, if he believes in everybody being equal, he's got two homes. Yeah, providing he has got two homes. Oh, well, naturally. Yeah, well, you've got to make sure your facts there, maybe, so if you're going to be the political conscience of Weatherfield. <laughs> and what sort of question will you ask the Tories? Well, I shall ask them about golf. Golf? Mm. And what's that got to do with Margaret Thatcher's eating habits? Does she play golf? Oh, well, very probably. All Tories play golf. Do you know, some of them even pretend that they can do more work during a round of golf than when they're actually at work. You know, talking business and that sort of thing. <laughs> well, I think that's just baloney. Oh, do you? Mm. I mean, how can they expect the rest of us to buckle to when they're playing golf all the time? They can't. I think they just tell each other blue stories like everybody else seems to do. <laughs> While they're playing golf, you mean? Mm. Kenneth. Yes? Well, talking about blue stories. Yes. Well, men tend to tell me them these days, but once upon a time they just didn't. Really? Mm. Well, you know, that might just mean something, Mavis. What? Well, it might mean that they think you're a little more broad-minded and liberated than they were. Oh, do you think so? Oh, hello, Mr. Fairclough. I thought Rita might have been in. Uh, no, she phoned through to say she was still feeling groggy. Oh. Is there anything I can do? Uh, no, no, it's the, uh, it's the Langtons. Oh, yeah, did they ever get off last night? Doesn't look like it. No, you've heard now, Debbie. No, no, why should I have? Oh, just that nobody seems to have seen them this morning. I was wondering whether I should go round there or not. Well, why not? Oh, I don't know, I just feel a bit reluctant somehow. Well, would you like me, why? would you like me to call? No, 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 I better do it myself, I know. See you. Bye. Bye. I thought they'd have been in Holland by now, Ray and Deirdre. Yeah. Oh, it's probably some little snag that's cropped out. <laughs> Let's hope that's all. Yeah. Right, well, I'll see you. All right, bye-bye. Right. Oh, by the way, uh, have you thought over that proposition of mine, you know, feeding my pensioners for me? Well, I haven't dismissed it altogether. Good. I knew you'd do it. Hey, you can! It's not too late to change your mind. I'm not going to change my mind, Ray. No matter what you do. Do? Oh, you mean Tracy? Don't worry, I'll not be doing nothing daft. She needs you more than she needs me. Thanks. What are you going to do? I'm going to Holland. When? Today. If I can't get a flight, I'll go by sea. Oh? What did you expect? Well, I wasn't sure what you were going to do. There's nothing for me here, is there? If you say so. What do you say? Oh, don't start that again, Ray. Hello. Hey, what's job? Well, we've not gone. I can see that. Deirdre's changed her mind, hasn't she? You what? We finished, me and her. I see. So I'm going to Holland on my own. You said this would happen, didn't you? Well, he was right. Can I talk to her? I mean, Rita. Oh. It's no good. I've tried. Blanche has tried. She won't budge. I'm sorry, mate. Well, I should have had more sense than taking your advice. Can you do me a favour? Name me. Will you run us to the bus station? I got the van outside. Right, then. Well, now? Nothing to keep me here, mate. Well, one thing. Aren't you going to stay and say goodbye to Tracy? Well, you do it for me, will you? Tell her I'll... 
I'll see it when I can. Come on, mate. Bye, Ray. Look after yourself. You too. When is that? The Tuesday before Christmas? Yeah, yeah, that sounds great. Sounds like a right old thrash. Bring a bird? I'll bring half a dozen if you like. Come in. Oh, uh, look, Frank, gotta go. Uh, yeah, that's right. If I don't see you before, the Tuesday before Christmas. Great, smashing. See ya. Just arranging your social life. Really? Tell me more. Well, this mate of mine, uh, Frank Jameson, he has his party every Christmas and, well, I'm invited, so... You're invited. Oh, how kind. Yeah. Right, then take the weight off your plate to me. Thanks. Great night last night, wasn't it? Memorable. And you've got to thank me. <laughs> There's no need. Oh, you're such a generous, modest person. I know. And the rest. Especially the rest. So then, when are we going to repeat my success? Ah, oh, well, I've got a slight problem there. Oh? You see... I still think you think I'm going to be your inside person at Bradley's, plug in your interests. Oh, never entered my mind, honest. But I mean, if you want to do that, you know, put a bit of business our way, the other half a dozen, what's wrong with that? I'll scratch your back and... No way, Mike. All right. If that's the way you want it, I'm easy, darling. I mean it, Mike, no way. I'm not going to be used like that. I just thought you ought to be quite clear on it. And now I am. Baldwin. Oh, hello, Harold. Um, look, I've been waiting all morning for this call, darling. See you. Yes, I'll phone you sometime. Oh, uh, just one other thing. The reason I'm really here. Yeah? As a sort of thanks for last night, and not to disappoint you altogether, I thought I'd just warn you. What about? Bradley's are opening a boutique, very similar to yours, only bigger and better. See you. You needn't keep looking at me like that. I'm not going anywhere near the Langtons. You think on your don't. It's their own business. You keep your nose out. Well, I just hope none of us ever regrets not making a discreet inquiry, that's all. <laughs> what was all that about? Oh, it's Ray and Deirdre. Apparently they've not gone yet. Really? And she's trying to make a big drama out of it. Well, it is rather strange, dear. What do you think can have gone wrong? Oh, now, don't you start, Mrs Walker, please. Fine, please. Yes, sir. Len, we were just saying that Ray and Deirdre don't appear to have gone yet. Ray has. Pardon? I said Ray has. He's gone by himself. But uh, Deirdre will be following on later, then? No. You mean they've split up? Yeah. Oh, why? Does it matter? Him and that girl, weren't it? Janice. I did warn him. Did he take any notice? Did he, others like And now? A good marriage like that. Finished. It seems such a waste. It is a waste. Yes, but if he broke the rules... I mean, this is what happens in your so-called permissive society. Freedom is one thing, but freedom to do as you like... Well, that's another thing. You should still have the choice there, Mrs Walker. Did you see Ray before he went? I've just taken him to the bus station. How worry. He didn't say much. Not much to say. He just asked me to look after the two of them. Deirdre, Tracy. I'm so very sorry, Deirdre, so very deeply sorry. Perhaps if I'd warned you... Now, Emily, don't go blaming yourself. Whatever happened had nothing to do with anything you did or didn't do, all right. Yes, but... Look, it didn't. These things happen. Ray and me aren't anything exceptional, you know. Don't you read your papers? I still think you should have tried to make a go of it. Do you think I should, Emily? Well, I think I might have done, Deirdre, no matter how hurt I was. Yeah, well, I must be different. Not to mention stubborn. Look, Mum, I know what I've done and I'm the one who's got to live with it. You will love. That's for certain.
instead of twittering about wishing your life away, why don't you offer yourself to him? Pardon? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said that, should I? Sounds rude. No, what I should have said is, why don't you offer him your services? Hey, that doesn't sound much better, does it? Look, before you really do get offensive, do you think I could just say a word? Listen, you're never happier than when you're up to your elbows in hot pot. You even like cleaning pans. You're the only woman I've ever met in my entire life who likes cleaning pans. Yes, well, I like doing a lot of things, but I don't go forcing them on people. You could have put that better and all. I'm sorry. Now, listen. Listen to a bit of advice from your auntie. Why don't you uh, offer to help and he'll be chuffed to little mint balls? Oh, I'll see. Oh, I'll see. Do you know, if we left to people like you, we'd still be waiting for pyramids. Uh, not talking. She's in one of her black moods. I wouldn't say out. Good morning, Mrs. Sharp. Good morning, Mavis. Do you think I can have a packet of sugared almonds? Sugared almonds? I know, I know. I don't need telling. I'd still have some of my teeth if I didn't eat them. Pricey and all. Yes, well, I don't need telling that either, which is why I don't indulge myself all that up. There we are. Thank you. Hey, Tom, is it right what I hear about the Ray Langton splitting up? Afraid so, Mrs. Sharp. Oh, dear. Well, it's what I always say about these young folk. First sign of trouble and you can't see them for dust. They have no more toleration than that blooming counter. Well, they're a bit more to it than that, Mrs. Sharples. You've been bothering with that girl next door. Oh, did she expect he's a fella, didn't he? Shrewd observation. Yes, he's a fella. Yes, but we know what they're like. They need telling they want clouching round the air hole. But you must think twice before you break a marriage up. It's too easy. It's much too easy. Have you seen out of her since he went away? No, she's keeping her head down. Hello. Bye bye. I couldn't go on living with a man if he did what Ray did. Mrs. Sharples has a point. Principles are a flaming trap door. Stand on them and you go straight through. Hello, Mrs. Sharples. Hello, love. Have I come at the wrong time? No, 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 it's all right. Come in. I'm stuck in a sweet. I can't offer you one. It's a sugar almond and we don't want her to get the taste of it, do <laughs> No, we? not yet a while. Well, then. Uh, look, I'm not in the mood for criticism, Mrs. Sharples. Hey, love, what's done's done. Or advice, either. I don't think no, I could take it I'm in. No, I'm not going to take, give you advice, either. Because I've never had anything like this happen to me and I wouldn't know how, you see. What I have come to say is that at a time like this, people tend to bury themselves and feed on their own bitterness, and that never solved out. So, don't close yourself away. I only live down at the corner of the street, and if you want somebody to grumble at, that's where I'll be. Hello, you. Hello, you. The nice little table. Hello, Charlie. Oh, look, uh, the Western Front, keep your ears open, will you? If anyone's interested, let me know. I might be getting rid of it. Now, listen, I don't want you to go asking around, no advertising or nothing. Just keep your ears open, all right? You see, uh, look, I, I, let, shut up a minute. I'd hate to miss a sucker because we were not on the open market, but uh, I don't want the whole wide world to know, you know. Uh, oh, hang on. Look, uh, I'll have to call you back, all right, mate? Yeah, until I do, just do what I say, OK? Yeah, see ya. Anyone ever tell you that some doors are for opening and some are for knocking on? Oh, sorry. Come in. I did think you might be glad to see me after I'd been away on my holidays. I uh, did think you might ask me how I enjoyed myself. Glad to see you. How were your holidays? Oh, fine. The sun shone. I didn't get food poisoning. And how was the fella? Uh, what fella are you talking about? The one you went with. Oh, him. Yes, him. How was he? Where are we talking about? I think you do. Oh, very well then. In that case, he was fine. Good. Good combination, that. Eh? Woman and a fella. Oh, yes. The very best. I hear you've been practising a bit yourself. What's this I hear about you bringing a dolly bird in as a sales representative? I was also thinking of changing my underpants. Did you hear about that? No. Oh, no. I never listen to talk like that about you, Mr. Baldwin. I'm not that interested. But I am interested when somebody tells me that a dolly bird is getting a job which you told me didn't even exist. Forget it, it never happened. Yeah, but it could have done, couldn't yes, it? Yes, it could have done. Yeah, well, forgive me for asking, but I'm never sure with you, you know. Well, that's the way I like it. Now, is there anything else you want to chat about while you're here, like the price of haircuts or West Ham's chances of getting back in the first Ooh, division? Oh, or... no, I don't think so. Good. In that case, send young Steve in, will you? If you can find him. OK. Get me Bradley's love, will you? Hey, uh, is it true about Ray Langton up in it? Got sent off with a flea in his ear, the way I heard it. Oh, come on, else it's a cruel world. Don't tell me you're just finding out. No, 
but I'm just a great big optimist, aren't I? <laughs> oh, hello, yeah. Uh, could I speak to Miss Gordon, please? Oh, ain't she? Um, no, uh, no, it's private, no. Uh, no, no message. I'll call back. Yeah. Don't know. What, me? Yeah, park yourself. What are you doing at the moment? Uh, replanning the sewing room. Trying to fit in those two extra machines you were talking about. Well, leave it, it can wait. I went up to those sales uh, reports on the Western Front. And don't cover anything up to spare my feelings. I'm a strong lad. Don't worry, you'll find out all in good time. No, you can't say that, Betty. I've just said it. I know you've just said it, but you can't say it. I'll say it again if you like. Would you condemn a young couple who hated the sight of each other to spend the rest of their lives together? Now, come on, would you? Answer me this. How did they come to get married in the first place if they ate the sight of each other? Yeah, I don't know. All right, so every couple that gets married are mad in love with one another, but they must have a, a lot in common with one another too. Well, I mean, they, they must like each other a lot before they go to the altar, so how come they hate each other? Well, that is just the point, Betty. They don't get to know each other all that well. You mean they rush into it? Well, exactly. They argue that they don't need to wait and get to know each other because it doesn't work out. They can easily get a divorce. Sometimes I think the people who just live together are acting more sensibly. I know it's an awful thing to say. They feel free, love you, among friends. There are terrible pitfalls in that, particularly for the woman. But when they just rush into marriage, as so many of them do, and when they've just got married for... For sex. For sex. Well, I mean, in no time, a baby comes, they find out they've made a mistake and separate, and then we wonder why we've got so many one-parent families. She's right, you know. It's what Deirdre is at the moment, a one-parent family. Steady on. He's only been gone five minutes. Nearly a week. <laughs> like I said, five minutes. Oh, do you reckon he'll come back? Well, I don't know. Do I? And when I don't know, I try to look on bright side. It's the only way to be. It's giving them something to talk about, isn't it? Yeah. Have you heard how Ray's settling? Yeah, I got a letter this morning. It's early days, yeah, but he's madly in love with the place, you know. He reckons it's a doddle. Of course, he could be just, you know... Putting a brave face on it. Yeah. I think he's badly cut up. Does he mention her? No. But would he? Probably not. Well, you know what I think, don't you? Tell you what, Hilda, I bet you tell us. Oh, don't you fret, I will. I think young people today follow examples, and some of them aren't all they're cracked up to be, are they? Well, take her next door to me, for instance. Now, Hilda. There you go, you see, soon as I open my mouth. I mean, just look at her. Three times married and just back from Majorca with her fancy man. Now, what kind of an example is that? Flipping shiny. Oh, I dare say it is to the likes of you. Really, Mrs Ogden, Elsie simply went on holiday with a friend. There's nothing wrong with that in this day and age. Perfectly innocent. Innocent? Elsie Tanner with a fella in Majorca? <laughs> Who do you think you're kidding? Oh, don't be rotten. Tell us what happened. What way do you mean? Well... You know. Oh, do you mean, did we like the same food and everything? Well, yeah. Uh, well, as a matter of fact, we did, yeah. He went for the paella a bit more than I did. Not a lot, but a bit. And I went for the pastry more than he did. But on the whole, it was marvellous. Yes, well, I'm very glad we've got that sorted out. You're rotten, you are. Now, listen, Dolly Daydream. Do what you like, but keep that shut. Take a bit of advice from your Auntie Elsie. You have to talk about it to enjoy it afterwards. It wasn't worth doing in the first place. And I know that knock, so answer the door. You're right. Sim, don't you think I've seen enough of you? Listen, I've just brought round these photographs. Then I'll be off and you won't see me for hours. Hey. Take a look at these. How did you get them done so soon? I've got connections. Hey, I? hey, these are good. Look. Of course they are. I'm on them. Who's the old fella? Oh, um, shh, don't mention it. Well, who is he? He's on everyone. He's a, a friend of Ron's. He's no friend of mine. He's a flaming nuisance. That's what he is. Oh, he was a very nice old gentleman, Harry. He, he came from Oldham. He, he sort of, um... Battened, Donis. That's the word, battened. Every time you went in the bar, there he was. Put your money away, lad. It's no good in there. <laughs> well, I must Forget admit, it. he was more free with his money than one I know. Uh, all right, I'm only joking. Where's your sense of humour? That man would make a saint lose his sense of humour. You know the kind, Gil. You've seen him. You know, has to buy every round, forever flashing a bulging wallet. No, I've never met anybody like that. I'm still waiting. Oh, I told you it wasn't your type. I said he was a nice old gentleman. Nice old gentleman, my foot. He was a dirty old man. I watched him on the dance floor with you. His hands were everywhere. Well, you've, you've got to move your hands in a tango. I mean, you know. I do know. I've danced championship tango, and you're not allowed to use your hands like horrible Harry did. 
Would you say it was a bit on the jealous side? Not a bit. He's green all over. <laughs> Took you long enough. Oh, give us a chance. I've not finished yet. You what? These are up to last quarter end. I'll have the up-to-date figures for you later on this afternoon. See you, do. You know, I noticed our two little dolly birds leaving home at nine o'clock, would you believe? Loaded with gear. Our gear. I suppose they'd borrow it to go on dates, do they? Well, everybody does. I don't. I mean, girls are working boutiques and that. Oh, I see. They all do it, so that makes it right, does it? Well, they always bring them back. That's just flaming. Well, I hope they do. Do you want me to tell them? No, it's all right, leave it. If there's any telling to be done, I'll do it. Well, not exactly going to bomb, are we? No. No good at all. Which is something to be thankful for. Paying for it, yeah? Sorry, love, I tried. Wouldn't do any harm buying me a drink as it happens. I'm here to give you a little bit of friendly advice. Oh, are you, Chuck? Yeah. Watch yourselves, because that's what Baldwin's doing. Oh, you mean watching himself? I mean watching you. Of course, he's got good taste. And he doesn't like what he's seeing. Getting to work late, borrowing gear. Are we? What will we do next? I'm only warning you. Did he tell you to? No. Then don't. You want to get yourself worked up, Chuck? It's funny how little children love dolly mixtures, isn't it? Mm. I think it's the name as much as anything. You know, not that that will mean much to Tracy, yeah. But I'll tell you what I'm doing. I'm picking out as many jellies as I can because she'll be able to manage them better. Hey, she can manage steak and chips, that one, but thanks all the same. <laughs> Look, I know I shouldn't say this because Any news yet, it. love? <laughs> Look, Deirdre's a friend of ours. Don't treat her like a close encounter of the umpteenth kind. No, it's just... Look, it's all right. I know how everybody feels, but I don't mind talking about it, honest. No, I haven't had any news. Mind you, I didn't really expect to. He's not really had time to write letters yet, has he? No. Well, it's not that I were trying to ignore it, but... Well, it must be very painful. Well, it is painful, but talking about it doesn't make it any worse. And you know me, I like talking. So much I've always said about you. <laughs> You're a right gas bag, you are. Yeah, there's no good talking to myself, because I'm a rotten listener. No. Not the nearly all, Jess. Oh, smashing. Uh, there you are. Sorry I've oh, more less. It's all right. Well, then. Uh, I understand you're having your troubles. Uh, yes, you could say that, Hilda. Ah, oh, it's terrible, isn't it? Do you know what I'm only saying to Stan? It's only five minutes since we gave 50 pence for a going-away present, and here she is still here. Thank you very much for reminding me, Hilda. Not having a Stan, I was only saying to myself this morning that anybody who contributed to that leaving present should get the two penneth. So here. And now, will you keep your big mouth shut? Ta-ra. Uh, Ta-ra, love. I wasn't asking for my money back. Tidbit? Woman's own? The lady, perhaps. Packet of envelopes. No offence, Hilda. That's me in front of my hotel. That's not a hotel. That's a cathedral. <laughs> Are you kidding? No wonder the organ music kept me awake all night. Oh, oh that's my 104-year-old mother, still going strong, selling her crochet work along the promenade. Oh, and here's you and the kids. Not a word to Elsie. Hey, kid, look at this. I know, I've seen it. Makes you sick, doesn't it? That, that was the biggest yacht in the harbour. A German industrialist owns that. He kept it lit up at night time. It was like a, like a fairy land. Oh, kid. Why didn't we lose the war? I thought we did. You know, your generation couldn't end it right, could you? Don't look at me. I wasn't even in the scouts. Well, well life is very unfair. Yes, yeah, so it'd be even unfairer if you don't get back. Okay. To the shop. We're not supposed to be having lunch together. You're supposed to be there working. All right, all right. I'm going. Oh, that reminds me. According to the lovely Steve, Mike has got his eyes on us. We'll get gone then. Did you hear what I said? According to the lovely Steve. If Mike asks how we are, he's at seven days' notice. Yeah, well, all the same. All right, I'm going. 
damage. You know, you do favour that horse. <laughs> Can I have a look? Yes, yeah, sure. Help Enough yourself. for them and their troubles, Chuck. We're having the majority. Oh, it was marvellous. There was this nightclub, you know, and they had this team of flamenco dancers. Oh, mate, great. Yeah, marvellous. We're having the majority. Swimming. We went swimming off these rocks. Mind you, you had to be careful where you sat down because of the rocks now, but the water came clear and warm. Clear as a bell it was. We don't know what we're missing. We don't, do we? I've only got one more question to ask. What's happened in Mallorca? What do you think? Say no more. What are you having, Jim? Why not? Why not? Hey, Elsie. Who's oh, this chap on all these photos? They won't tell me down there. Oh, that was Harry, dear Harry, from Oldham. He was a lovely fella. Ron was mad about him, weren't you, Ron? Yeah, ecstatic. <laughs> yeah, he, he took me out once or twice, you know, did Harry? Oh, you two of them then? Well, yes, you see, Ron had a bit of tummy trouble from time to time, and Harry didn't uh, mind acting as substitute, you know. I do, I do. It looks as though he's got a bob or two. Oh, yes, he was. Not only that, he was lavish with it, and lively too. Get away, lively, loaded and lavish. Marvellous combination, that, eh, Ronald? Give us a pint and shut up the lot of you. <laughs> but it isn't bad, really, and the hours suit me. Oh, dear. I'd better get off. It's time for bed. <laughs> oh, take the notice of me. I've been like this since dinner time. Well, I'd better get back all the same, in case Mr. Dawson decides to do the rounds. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye. Oh, dear. Do you know, I don't know what's up with me. Just, what did I have for me dinner? Just a pie and a salad, that's all. Because it could have been those vodkas. You're right, it could have been. Ah! Just a fella. We've been waiting to see you. Rita. She has a proposal. Really? Well, I'm not sure if it's a proposal or a proposition. Any road, she wants to talk to you. Do you think I could make my own mind? Oh, now, be fair. If I let you, you'd never move an inch. No, what she's trying to oh, tell you is... do you mind? The floor's yours. Well, Ken, it's just that, you know, you asked me if I'd do the food for the old folks. Before you get yourself in too deep, what she's trying to say is she will do the catering. Oh, I see. Well, go on, tell him how good you are at it. Catering? Oh, well, I have had some little experience in it, and I love cooking, so, well... Well, yes. Well, look, why don't you pop round later on tonight? We'll have a chat about it, eh? But uh, it's not quite as easy as it looks, you know. I mean, uh, quite a lot of them, like Uncle Albert, are not exactly renowned for the abundance of their appreciation. Well, all she wants is the warm glow you get from a job well done. And she'll save you money, you know. Oh, yes, oh, yes, I know. And that's no small consideration. Well, I'll talk to you later, then. Right. I'll be in all evening. That's fine. <laughs> Do you know, ladies, I think you handled that very well. Where do you think you're going? Home. It's only 20 past five. We haven't had a customer in since three o'clock. We're not going to get a mad rush now, are we? I think we deserve a medal staying here as long as we do. I mean, all the other shops are only closed at half past five. Yeah, but get your coat on. Oh. How's it looking? I'm on the last lap. What time is it? 5.25. Wait a minute. Got a call to make. While I'm at it, I'll have a word with that new girl in packing. Uh, what's her name? Uh, Don't worry, I'll ask her. You concentrate on what you're doing. Bring a couple of tea towels in with you, Chuck. I've got them in your closet. Oh. Oh, I'll tell you what. No. I hope we have an easy night tonight, kid. I'm pooped. I'm done now. It's been like a morgue in here all day. I know. That's what does it, you see. I thrive on hard work. You could have fooled me. I thought you thrived on scarving off home early. Well, I won't tell you a lie, Betty. I thrive on that and all. Uh, shall you let him in or shall I? Let who in? The waiting millions, Chuck. It's half five. You let him in. I might get killed in the rush. <laughs> and who cares if I get trampled <laughs> underfoot? <sighs> them two kids again after me. I've told you two before, we don't sell methylated <laughs> spirits. You get it under the viaduct from that scruffy little fella with a top hat and a string vest on. Mm. Did you know you got a cabaret thrown in and all? Yeah, Princess Margaret comes in here. And Hilda Ogden. Yeah, and all. And if you want to vote, folks, remember the name. It's Susie and Gail. What is she talking about? Oh, I've got no idea. Could we have a bottle of cider, please? The roughest you've got. I thought you didn't close till six o'clock. We don't. Well, what are you doing in here? Buying a bottle of cider. Doesn't she ask daft questions? Yeah. Oi, I'll daft question the pair of you in a minute. Good evening, sir. How nice to see you. Boy. Give us a large scotch, will you, then? The sun's not gone over the yardarm yet, you know. Keep your yardarm. 
you had my worries, you'd be a two bottle a day man. If I was a man, I would have worries. I mean, to say dress like this. Good night, girls. Good night. No, I tell you, he doesn't care. You saw him, didn't you? Yeah, but we were there, weren't we? Just gone 5.30. I know we were there, and so was he. And since when has he been past bowling us out in public? No, I tell you, he doesn't care. What's a few minutes to him? If it comes to the point where we'll Sam's electricity bill coming home early. Why don't you tell him that? It might give you a rise. Mm. What's that? That's your Uncle Ron. Doesn't he ever work? I say, don't you ever work? You cheeky, madam. I'm just going to make Elsie a nice cup of tea now, and after that, I'm going to pick up the day man and the cab. Hey, you know something? I'll still be sitting in the damn thing at five o'clock tomorrow morning. Who do you pick up at five o'clock in the morning? Oh, the odd drunk. Chinese waiters coming out of the gambling clubs. Great gamblers, the Chinese, you know. And great tippers when they've been lucky. And then, if I'm lucky, when I get all that lot home, I might be able to crawl into my own pit run about six o'clock. So don't you come with me about having a soft job. If there's any Bobby's job going around here, it's yours. Well, we can't all be lucky, can we? Hmm. Good. I'm glad you think so. Now, not the business, son. That's bad, and that's why it's good. If these have been good, being me, I'd want to stay and fight it out, wouldn't I? Probably lose my shirt. As it is, we're, there's no option. We just gotta get rid of it. What for? Fight who? Bradley's. They're opening up in opposition. New boutique, only bigger and better. How do you know? Got context, haven't I? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I've checked and double checked while I hide into nothing, so. Gotta get rid of it. What about the girls? Do we get rid of them too? No, old I do a thing like that. No need to, son. They're getting rid of themselves. Do you? I do. Well, not the exact second, but it's near to half past eight to suit my purposes. That is typical, that. Dead typical. Mm -hmm. You say something. Yeah. I said it were typical. Typical of your whole attitude towards life. Slovenly, couldn't care less, arrogant. Have you done? You're going to get us into trouble. Serious trouble. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. Yes, oh, you are. For goodness sake, put a sock in it, will you? Like a cup of parrots. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. Yeah, but I'm right, though, aren't I, Elsie? She's all them things I said. Yeah. See? Well, you're a bit too much the other way sometimes. You make mountains out of molehills. <laughs> see? Yeah, well, I'm right this time. You see if I'm not. And that is another example of what I'm going on about. Oh, for goodness sake, will you come on? You get more like an old washwoman every day. Well, at least have the sense to stick it up your jumper. You know we've been being warned before about taking stuff from the shop to wear for ourselves. And let everyone think I'm pregnant. Yeah, well, I'd rather that than get the sack towel. Oh. Can you tell? <laughs> Not a lot. Anyway, your tummy matches your cheeks now. Chubby. If we meet Pete Harris on the way, I'll murder you. Mm, just don't let it drop out, that's all. Well, there's no sign of Mike Baldwin this morning, that's for sure. Well, you can't touch him for being late this morning. In fact, they're early. Right. Gail and Susie, I just saw them leaving Elsie's. Oh, well, they are being good little girls, aren't they? Deliberately. But don't worry, it won't last long. Ah, oh, they're not that bad, Mike. And they work very well when the pressure's on, especially Gail. I know they're not perfect, but, well, who is? It's not the point. No, I know. Look, the Western Front is losing money and it could get worse, so I'm sending it. Now, am I right or wrong? Right. Well, then, still. Yeah? No, nothing. They'll be entitled to a fair bit of redundancy money, I suppose. You what? Well, redundancy money, Gail and Susie, they must have worked for us. You've got to be joking. There'll be no question of any redundancy money. Well, you've got to pay it, Mike. It's the law. Not if they're not working for me when I do close the shop. How'd you propose to arrange that? By giving them the elbow first. On what grounds? Unsatisfactory work. Well, it's not strictly true. You've got to be joking. I can already have them for what? Uh, leaving early, buying the shop's gear, one other offence, and I've got them to rights, haven't I? I can sack them without any comebacks. There'll be no question of any industrial tribunal. You've got it all worked out, haven't you? I hope so, Steve, yeah. There is one thing, though. What? Don't go tipping them the wink, eh? Out of any sense of misplaced loyalty or lust or love or whatever. Because if you do, 
You'll be feeling the elbow as well, right? Now, what would you give a gang of senior citizens for their supper, if you had to cater for them? Oh, I've no idea. I mean, I'm not often called upon to do things like that. Well, neither is she. That's why she's so desperate. Oh, I'm not desperate for ideas. Oh, yes, you are. You're just saying that. You're just trying to keep a cool exterior, an old time of belly buttons whizzing round like that. Oh, look, I have got one or two ideas that I'm in the process of mulling over. Well, if that's been in a panic, I'm a juju baby. However, if Deirdre has got any ideas, well, my mind's not totally closed on the subject, and I should be pleased to hear them. Don't she speak beautifully? Lovely. She's good for politics and all, you know. I don't doubt it. Mm, she's going to be the new Barbara Castle in Weatherfield. Oh, at the very least. But when you've quite finished, have you any ideas, Deirdre? Say, don't you were desperate. Oh, sorry, Mrs. Castle. Now, let's see. What would I give a gang of old folk? Monkey gland? Oh. No, seriously, Mavis. If it was me, I'd probably give him something simple, like um, spud pie, treacle pud to follow, with plenty of tea to wash it down. It's not very imaginative, though, is it? Yeah, no, but old folk tend to like what they're used to. That's just what I keep telling them. Oh. Barney. Hilda. Now, you remember what I've said, Mavis. It's good advice, especially the treacle pud. My granddad used to swear by it. Had it at least three times a week. Mind you, his feet used to stick to the ground a lot when he walked. <laughs> See ya. Uh, oh, Deirdre. Look, I I'm sorry for what I said yesterday. Well, it were a daft thing to say. I mean, as if he hadn't got enough trouble without me. Any road, I I'm very sorry. That's all right, Hilda. We all say things we don't mean. See you, love. Ta da. Could I have a packet of greaseproof paper, please? Of course you can, Hilda. You can have half a dozen if you like. We're expecting some more in next week, madam. Why don't you call in on Tuesday? Mm. Okay, bye bye. Thank you very much, madam. Three bags full, madam. Being nice costs nothing. Well, you can overdo it, though. I don't think that was overdoing it. Go on, you're fawning, crawling. It's demeaning. You'd rather I were offhand, would you? Not offhand. I didn't say offhand. Natural. Well, I think you're offhand. Like a lot of folks in shops nowadays, the take it or leave it attitude. Well, I don't want my customers to leave it. I want them to take it. Well, if they can't take it without me crawling all over them. Oh, you're hopeless when you're in this kind of room. Yeah, and you're pathetic. I keep telling you there's no reason to be frightened of Mike Baldwin. You seem to forget that not so long ago I had him jumping through hoops. That was a long time ago. And I could do it again if I put my mind to it. Oh, hold the fort a minute, will you, mate? I'm just going to pop out of it. Uh, yeah, sure. Where can I get you if I need you? Not quite sure where I'll be. I want to pick someone's brains about how much I must ask for the shop when I sell it. Oh. Well, at least want to get my money back, don't I? Well, you'll do that all right. No danger. Uh, look, Steve, we seem to have been here before. It's not personal, you know. I'm not selling the shop to get a Gale and Susie. The shop is losing money and that's why I'm selling it. You give me the impression that you seem to think it's personal. No, I don't. I credit you with more sense than that. Good. Morning. Morning. Here, Elsie. What's your opinion of me? Do you think I work hard to keep this place profitable and you lot in jobs? Yeah, I think you do. Good. Glad someone around here does. What brought that on? You two been having a fallout? No more than usual. Oh, I see. Just a little difference of opinion at the top, eh? Yeah. Oh, well, not to bother. We have it at the bottom as well. You know, it's been sorting out an argument between two other girls. Whether they're having a fortnight off at Christmas, or more, or Elsie. less. Now, this didn't come from me, right? No way did it come from me. All right, it didn't come from you. What didn't come from you? Gail and Susie, they should be warned to pull their socks off and keep their noses clean, especially that. Mm, in reference to the shop, I presume? Yeah. No, oh, I'm sorry, Steve. That's your job. You're the management. Oh, well, that's the trouble, you see. I can't. No, it's my day off, actually. Oh, look at you. Oh, I find I spend the time doing the housework, mainly. Yeah, a woman's work. Never done, even when you're living on your own. I know. I thought I'd get bored, but I always seem to find something to do, and she takes up a lot of my time. Yes. Is she missing Ray at all? Well, not so you'd notice. I am, though. Well, I suppose it must be that. I keep finding myself bursting into tears for no reason at all. That's depression. 
I did that after Ernest died for quite some time. She caught me at it the other day, and do you know what she did? Little love. Put her arms around my neck and cuddled me like I was a baby. Oh. Have you any other problems? I mean, don't think I'm prying. Fry? <laughs> you, Emily. You wouldn't know where to start. Problems, yes. Well, of course I've got problems. Like we're a one-parent family now. Like there's an empty space in my bed that never seems to get warm, even if I put the electric blanket on. What about money? Money? Well, I just wondered if... Well, Ray hadn't got round to... Well, I mean, if he hadn't got properly settled in Holland yet and hadn't had the opportunity to send you anything. If that were the case, I could let you have some. As much as you like, really. I'm hardly short of money, what with the compensation for Ernest's death. So, I do need some to tide you over. Aren't you a love, eh? I bet you're the only person in the world who'd have thought of that, let alone round here. Oh, well, I do know that women in your situation do sometimes have problems in that respect. I mean, not that I'm suggesting that Ray won't contribute eventually. Yeah, well, I don't really know whether he will or not yet, Emily. Oh, I'm sure he will, dear. Yeah, Jane. you're probably right. But do you want a loan and until... No, love. I don't need one. He left me a few quid, but thanks very much for asking. The offer stands, though, Deirdre. Hey, listen, what I should really be doing, instead of relying on charity, just in case any problems do arise about money, I should be looking for a job. Couldn't you go back to the yard, or am I being insensitive? No. I think the Langtons have burnt their boats there, love. <laughs> it's a fact, fair, love. You are definitely spending more time in here since Ray went. Rubbish. Tell him, Ken. Well, I'm hard in authority on time spent in here, Bet. I don't come in often enough. True. It's not something I've said, is it? No, it's just that I have this very low capacity for liquid refreshment. I haven't got the necessary hollow legs. There you go. Another example. What of? How rotten and unfair life is. There's you. Attractive, intelligent, highly eligible. You don't come in here because nature's nobbled you. There's him. Unattractive, pig ignorant and married and he's never off the doorstep. I can always find another pub if you're not careful, you know. Promises, promises. What are we talking about? About how Len is apparently becoming a hopeless alcoholic. That's just rubbish, that. Betty, come yeah. here. What were you saying about him only yesterday? Yesterday? Yesterday dinner, I think it was. What was I saying about him? How he was the first to come in and the last to leave these days. I never said that. Didn't you? Yeah, I could have sworn. It's a fact, though, isn't it? Yeah. A word to the wise Len, that's all. Well, it's rubbish, you tell you. I'm going after this one. And the rest. Do you uh, fancy a pie? Have we got nothing in the house? Well, we've got a bit of liver, but that's at least a week old. Well, have a pie. Yeah, very wise. Can we have two pies, please, love? Yeah, they're very good today. Oh, are they? Have you been sampling the profits? Yeah, as soon as they come in, I can't resist it. I mean, look at me. I'm a fool to myself. Oh, are we all? Which reminds me. Oh, hello. I hear your Jean Brodie voice coming on. Oh, you're not far wrong. Our Linda used to call it my finger wagging voice. What have I done now? You've got a friend at court. Hey? Yeah. And that friend says you're going to get the push from that shop unless you pull your socks up quick. Oh, who's my friend? It doesn't matter. There you are. 40 feet, whoever's paying. Oh, who always pays? Here we are, look. 20, 30, 40 feet. I nearly had another one. Come on, shooting. <laughs> So well, they are. Did you hear me? Yeah. But you're not taking much notice by the look of things. Not a lot. I see. It doesn't matter about your job. You can lose your job just like that. After all, jobs are ten a penny, aren't they? I'm not going to lose it. Because you're going to put yourself so. Look, Elsie, for reasons which I won't go into, I'm not going to get the sack. I'm indispensable to that shop. It's me that's the personality there. I mean, as much as I love Gail, it's not her they identify with the Western Front. It's me. We go together like meat and pie, so stop worrying about me. You know, Gail's dead right. You are flaming arrogant. Yeah, it's a good feeling. Common so I'm told to the young. <laughs> All right, don't choke yourself. It's only the boss. Hello, man. Compensating for something, eh? Pardon? The cake. I thought it was a substitute for something like uh, fellas or work. We've been very busy this morning. Oh, and how busy is very busy? We've had about six customers. Oh, and how much is in the till? Twenty pounds. From six customers? Didn't you bother taking any money off them? Well, actually, only two of them bought anything. Aye. 
It's about par for the course these days. Where's the Empress of China? Oh. Oh, Susie. That's very good, Mike. She's on a dinner break. How long has she been on her break? Not long, about ten minutes. You had your break? Yeah, about then, half an hour. Then why are you still eating? Well, I didn't actually eat on my dinner break. And what did you do then? I shopped. Oh, a sort of uh, busman's dinner break? Yeah. Well, in future, you have your dinner on your dinner break and not on my time. OK? Yes, Mr Baldwin. And that goes for your mate as well. Yes, Mr Baldwin. Madam. Well, that's it. There's my dinner gone, gone back to the foundry. Hey, it's all going, is it? Ah, oh, yes. Well, when you're a member of the working class, what else can you do? Marry a duke. I never met any dukes at Weatherfield Pally. You come in, are you, lady? Yeah, might as well. Ciao, ciao. Ciao. See, fair cloth, you've seen them too often, so have you, Kenneth, for that matter. Yeah, I seem to have got the taste today for some reason. Mm. He says that every day, ever since he was 12 and his mum gave him a sip of a mess. Have another one, Ken. Yeah, go on, why not? You can always buy a bag of peppermints before going back to the centre. This is how it starts, Ken. You fall into bad company and very soon you're worse than they are. Although I'm not sure that's possible in this case. Have one yourself. Oh, how well, kind, isn't he kind, Ken? I'm always saying how kind Len Fairclough is. I'll have a gin and tonic. Hey, shall we all get drunk and move on to a club somewhere? Have one of them sort of afternoons. You can come as well if you want, Emily. Uh, not today. I've got the kitchen floor to do. You're a saint, aren't you, Emily? Actual saint. Actually, it was you I wanted to see, Mr. Fairclough. I've been to your house several times, but nobody was in. I keep trying to get out of here, love, but it's him. He keeps stopping me. He keeps putting his foot on my shirt. <laughs> A likely story, eh, Emily? Yes. What do you want to see me about, anyway? Well, it was Deirdre, actually. Hey, she's all right, isn't she? She's not ill or anything. No, no, of course not. It's just that I think she could do with a job. Good idea, yes. Help keep her mind off, uh, well, things. No, it's not that. It's rather more financial reasons. I don't know of any jobs. Not lately. I was thinking of the yard. She said she'd like to come back to the yard. She thinks you wouldn't entertain her because of... Well, oh, because of Ray absconding. There's no hard feelings between me and her. No, well, I, I didn't think there would be, so I thought perhaps you could bring the subject up when you next see her. I will, definitely. Oh, thanks. Bye. 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 Emily, why don't you come out thrash with us and tell with kitchen floor? Uh, no, thanks. N not today. I wonder what makes her like her and me like me. Oh, easy. It's the good fairy in her case and uh, a hobgoblin in yours. I'm not sure I like you in drink, Ken Barlow. Hey, fair club. What? Do you think your Rita will take kindly to having a young, nubile, prospective divorcee and mincing round the yard? So that's what she thought she'd give him. Spud pie and treacle pudding. Didn't you, maybe? Oh, take no notice, Mrs. Sharples. It was just a suggestion. Well, let's hope it stops at a suggestion at all. Have you ever had treacle pudding? They put it between the cracks and paving stones where they run short of tar. Really? <laughs> oh, I've no intention of giving you treacle pudding, Mrs. Sharples. Oh, well, I'm not bothered about myself. I think I could manage. It's people like Jess Crabtree I'm bothered about. To my certain knowledge, he's never had a tooth in his head since he was 15. What, not even false ones? No, his father was a very mean man. Wouldn't give you the skin off a custard. Oh. Wouldn't buy Jess any new teeth, so he's had to learn to live without them. Oh, awful. Oh, oh. oh, Jess is all right, as so long as he doesn't laugh much. <laughs> now, Mrs Sharples, what would you give him if you had to cater for him? Well, there's only one thing, isn't there? A jolly good Lancashire hot pot made from best end of neck and a nice sherry trifle to follow. Hey, well, that sounds all right, Mavis. Mavis? Well, it's another suggestion. Well, what could be better than that? Well, I don't know till I've considered all the possibilities. Well, you can't beat a good Lancashire hot pot. Well, I'm sorry, Mrs Sharples, but I'm not going to be badgered into making a decision till I've given it very careful thought. After all, I'm the one making this supper. Yes, and I'm one of them that's going to eat it, and I don't want to be poisoned. Ta-ra. Ta-ra, Mrs Sharples. Bye. Oh, don't she get upset? Well, Mrs. Sharples isn't used to being cross, Mavis, especially by the sheep of this world. I'm no sheep. Don't start on me. Hello. Hello. How's it going then? All right. How are you? Ah, great me. <laughs> I could see that. 
Hey, I've, I've been wondering. Oh, yeah? How are you fixed, like? Fixed? Yeah, no one's ever taken it, you know. I mean, it's still there for you. No one's got it. I mean, well, only temporarily. What are you talking about, Len? Your job at the yard. It's still there. There's no hard feelings between me and you, you know. You've been talking to Emily Bishop. No. Well, why should I do that? Listen, Len, despite what you might have heard, I'm really not pushing for a job. In fact, I've only just now come off the phone from my mother. She wants me and Tracy to go and stay with her for a while. Oh. Well, when you, when you come back then, eh? Tell you the truth, I could do with someone there, you know, to keep her eye on things. Not to mention you. Especially me, yeah. I don't like working on my own, Deirdre. I never have. I get a bit lonely, you know. Listen, when I come back, love, I promise I'll, I'll think about it. You do that, eh? There's no hard feelings, like I said, between you and me, you know. Hey, do I appear a bit drunk to you? No! Well, I am. It's all Bet Lynch's fault, you know. She wanted to go on to a club. I would have done if I hadn't been wet. I'll see you. Seventy-seven, not bad for a non-market day. Triffitt. Not bad. Yeah, I said. Oh, it's nearly six o'clock. Twenty-two is not nearly six. Oh, come on, Gail. We'll knock anybody else in now. I'd rather going home to make the tea or going home to eat it. Another twenty minutes won't kill us. It'll kill me. Oh, come on. You've said we've not done bad today. Come on, be a devil. What if Mike Baldwin decides to pop in again? He's been in once today, even he's not that keen. Yeah, all right. I've had enough of this place myself today. Yeah, well, come on before you change your mind. I'll have to just put this in the night safe. No problem. Off home? No. Someone to see? No. Nope. OK, be like that. Well, as a matter of fact, I've just rung the shop at what time? 5.45. And guess what? No reply. Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. Well, they could be busy. Good try. Where are you going? Well, this time last night they were in the pub, weren't they? With a bit of luck, they'll be there again. Hopefully. like this for more than a week now, has he? Seems to have no strength at all. Comes out in a sweat if he just picks the paper up. Do you know, he's hardly moved out of that chair all day today. And that's not like Stan, you know. Oh, he's not one for stopping in the house. Well, not with a pub 50 yards down the street. Don't you sometimes feel it was a grave mistake, Hilda? What? Well, coming to live so near to a pub. Well, that was one of the main reasons we come to live here in the first place. Oh. He paced it out. Oh. He did, as true as I'm stood here. And the Rovers won by about ten yards from house in Raglan Street. You know the Lord Raglan? Oh. Mm. And he rode. See what a drop of stout will do for him. Yeah. Ta-ra. Ta-ra, lovely. Oh. What's going on? You might well ask. Funny breed fellas, aren't they? Not a bit like us at all. You can say that again. <laughs> Layer of cement or a layer of pastry? It'll melt in your mouth. Potatoes, carrots, and Brussels sprouts. But of course. Else knew what she was doing when she trapped you, didn't she? I'm too modest to say you're right, but then if I said you were wrong, I'd be lying. Hmm. I wonder if that fella you and Elsie met in Mallorca can cook. I wouldn't think so. All he's good at is spending money with great vulgarity. Oh, I didn't think you were the jealous type, Ron. I'm not. I'm just discerning. I'll be Elsie, she'll have forgotten the key. I let her in, I should, shouldn't I, after all? Welcome home the work. Ah, I should take your pinny off first. Yeah, you could have changed your frock. Quiet, <laughs> woman! You know, I think he's very fond of her. Yeah, I know what she says, I think she's fond of her. Hello, yeah. well, Mr. Baldwin. Hi, Mike. It's not gone six yet. Isn't it? So, what are you doing here? Oh, my watch must be fast. Hers as well. We've only just landed home. Not two minutes ago. But you know what? Those few minutes have cost you your jobs. Because you're both fired. So you get your cards in the morning. 
Oh, now. He's not a very nice man, is he? I've often thought that. I should never have listened to you. I should never have listened. Oh, belt up. Oh, morning. Morning, Mike. Well, I want the girls on an order from Rushwoods today. I've already told them they're on the job. Good luck. I've uh, got a bit of news for you. I had a drink with an old pal of mine last night. Uh, used to go to school together. He works for the Department of Employment now. Ha! <laughs> if you can call that working. Yeah, well, anyway... Well, we're not he... taking on any girls to replace Garland and Susie, if that's what you're on about. I'm putting in Elsie as a stopgap till I sell it. No, I wasn't thinking of replacements. I had a word with him about uh, sacking people. Well... Well, it looks like you slipped up sacking him the way you did. It looks more or less as though it was wrongful dismissal. What the hell are you talking about? I caught them red-handed. They closed the shop when they should have been working. I know. And not only that, it's not the first time I caught them doing something wrong. It's the third. Yeah, but according to him, you should have warned them. First verbally and then two more times in writing. Ah, oh, that's bloody ridiculous. I'm only telling you what he told me. According to him, they've got a case for wrongful dismissal. <laughs> what a flaming liberty. No wonder the country's up the swamp. And there's something else. You know you didn't want to give them any redundancy money. Yeah. Well, they weren't eligible for it anyway. They hadn't worked for you for the full two years. Oh, marvellous. Terrific. Then why the hell didn't you tell me before I fired them? Well, I didn't know. What do you mean you didn't know? Why didn't you know? What do you think I'm paying you for? Well, I'm not an expert in labour relations. Mike, I'm not to blame. You were the one that was in such a rush to get yeah, rid of them. Yeah, all right, all right. No wonder the economy's in such chaos. Can't fire two useless birds without jumping through a million bureaucratic hoops. Yeah, well... They weren't exactly useless. And anyway, fair's fair. If you're going to fire somebody, I reckon you should do it in a reasonable manner. Look, I don't want a sermon of you. Look, you know, I know, and your mate knows about wrongful dismissal. Those girls don't. And as long as it stays that way, that's fine by me. Now, you just make sure that it does, OK? Ah, oh, Elsie, just the lady I wanted to see. Yeah, well, I want to see you and all. It's, uh... About Gail and Susie. Now, I know you're going to say it's none of my business. Right, it's none of your but business. But I'm going to say it just the same. Now, I know they deserve what they've got, but they're only kids, and I'm sure they've learned their lessons, so how about giving them another chance, eh? I can't afford them, else. I need them like a hole in the head. Is that your last word? No, not quite. Look, the Western Front's no good to me standing close, so I want you to look after it until further notice. Me? I've got a job here. Yeah, well, Wonder Boy can do that. Come on, Just else. a minute, Come just on. a minute. I suppose I've got to go if you tell me to. It's going to be bad enough coping on my own over there. I'm not going to stay open in my lunchtime. Right, come 12 o'clock, I'm going to shut that door and have an hour's lunch break. All right, all right, who's arguing? Well, just as long as you get it straight. I don't want you getting any funny ideas about firing me. Oh, now, else would I do that? Of course you would. You'd fire your old father if it suited you. Whoever told you I had one? Yeah. Well, Mavis, what do you think? Will it be enough equipment? Yes, I think so, Ken, just about. Do you know, you can tell Mrs Sharples looks after this place. It's spotless. I even saw her washing the bread knife, you know. Oh, talking of washing up, Ken. Cooking and serving for 30 people is going to cause an awful lot. Don't worry, love. When I say I'll help people, I help them. I won't scarf it after the meal's served. No danger. Yes, I think you'll find that a lot of the old folk have volunteered to do the washing up. They can be very helpful, maybe, particularly if they've enjoyed their meal. What, what is it? What do we have in the grub, you know? Uh, cocoa van. Cocoa what? Cocoa van. It's like chicken cooked with red wine. Then there's chocolate mousse to follow. Oh, great. <laughs> hey, you did say the voluntary staff could have helping, didn't you, Ken? Indeed I did, Eddie, especially a big one. <laughs> hey, I don't want to sound as if I'm niggling and that, but, um, this cocker watch I mean, isn't it a little bit, uh, well, you know, Frenchified for around here? A bit different to what they're used to, like. Oh, yes, it is, but both Mavis and I think there's a lot to be said for wider horizons, even at old folks' dinners. Do you know, I'm with you there, Colonel. Wider horizons? Used to think about them a lot when I was in Bolton. Have you got the birds? Oh, the chickens. Only well, think I can help you out there. I've got a mate. Well, he's not really a mate. He's a business contact. But I can get all the birds I want dead cheap. Mm, yeah, well, I, I think not. Thank you, Eddie. Hey, there's nothing bent about these birds, you know. All, all the dead legit. Hey, they're good birds. Well, you might get the odd one with a leg missing. <laughs> but if it hasn't been walking about, it'll have a nice plump breast, won't it? Yes, well, thank you very much, Eddie. But I think we'll patronise the corner shop all the same. Thank you. Uh, how many bottles of wine do you think you want, Oh, I maybe? think uh, just two, please. Right. Can any inexpensive red table wine will do? Right. Wine? Are we having a glass of wine at this feast tomorrow night? Oh, no, I'm afraid not, Mrs Sharples. It's a good idea, but the uh, funds won't quite run to it. No, the wine is just for cooking. Wine in a hot pot? I'm not cooking like a hot pot, Mrs Sharples. No, we're having cock au vin. That's chicken in red wine. Yes, I know exactly what it is. Well, I can tell you now, they won't like it. Oh, how 
can you say that? Mr. Sharples, hardly any of them will ever have had it. Exactly. It's fancy food, and they don't like fancy food. But don't take my word for it. But you'll find out for yourself when it's all left tomorrow night. Oh, and another thing. I want this kitchen leaving exactly as you found it. Never mind, Mavis. It'll be all right on the night. Yeah, don't worry. I think it's them foreign names to put them off, you know. That cocker van. If you called it cocker de Nort, you'd have them slavering over it. Oh, no, please yourself. There's a cook wanted at the hospital. What's she wanted for? Poisoning the patient? What? Oh, forget it. There's another one at the hospital. Laundry assistance. Previous experience not required, though applicants should be physically fit. That means it's rotten hard work. And what is a laundry assistant anyway? A washerwoman. Yeah, it's all the same. All the good jobs you need qualifications for, we haven't got. The ones we could have, I don't fancy. Oh, don't worry. Somebody will turn up. Hello. Can I come in? I don't see why you should. I've brought you P45s and that. You really enjoy this, don't you, doing Baldwin's dirty work Shut for up, it? Susie. It's not Steve's fault we got fired. I think you had a raw deal. Don't tell us. Tell Baldwin. I did, if you must know. And I did try and warn you beforehand, and he wouldn't listen, would you? I kept telling you we had to watch it. You made it real easy for Mike. You were dead stupid. OK, if that's what you've came to tell us, you've told us ta -ra. What I really came for was to tell you something you ought to know. Only you didn't get it from me, OK? Right. Right. Well, Mike was out of line firing you the way he did. You ought to have received a written warning first. Oh, I see. So we have a little piece of paper telling us where to get off amongst our souvenirs. You're missing the point. Shut up, Susie. Let him finish. What I'm saying is this. Mike didn't follow the correct channels that a boss has to nowadays. So you've got a case for claiming wrongful dismissal. Oh, great. Does that mean we can have our jobs back? Well, put it this way, at least it gives you room to manoeuvre when you talk to him. Yeah, and just wait till you hear what I've got to say to him. And if you'll take my advice, you won't get into a shouting match with him. And don't forget, you didn't get it from me. Thanks a lot, Steve. Oh, you're smashing. Mm -hmm. Teaser. <laughs> oh, hello. You've got a visitor. How do you do? Well, I was expecting to see Mrs. Tanner here. She's at work. Oh, what a pity. Never mind, I'll leave her a message. I mean, you don't know oh, me. Oh, yes, but, I do. Uh, I've seen photographs of you. You were in Mallorca the same time as Ron and Elsie. You're Harry. Blow me, aye. Harry Payne. <laughs> Fancy you knowing. But then I always did take a good picture. <laughs> well, she's at work, but I'll tell you where she'll be in the next ten minutes. You know the pub at the end of the road, the rover's return? Time, love. Just the job. That's where I'll be waiting. Cheerio. <laughs> Of course, they all come out on strike for me, but they'll not bother for them girls. No, well, they learnt a lesson with you, didn't they? It must have cost them a fortune in wages. Oh, well, it was worth it. Just shows on how much they think of me. But them girls, well, they're only bits of kids, aren't they? Now then, what did I come in here for? No, don't ask me, love. Oh, yeah, give us a tin of baked beans. Oh, excuse me, Miss Stockton. I don't want to push in on and read it on her own in the cabin. I'm never such a rush. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Other folk have got work to do as well, you know. First come, first served. Well, I don't want serving. I just want to ask Alf something. Oh. Oh, well, that's all right, then. As long as you don't expect me to stand here with my fingers in my ears while you ask him. <laughs> you sell frozen chickens, don't you, Alf? Do you happen to have six? Uh, I think so, huh? Oh, good. That's all I wanted to know. Would you keep them for me, please, then? Six? Yes, please. Thanks very much. Hey, well, when shall I keep them? Now, what the heck does she want six chickens for? Well, it's for the old folks. Supper tomorrow night. She's doing the catering, isn't she? Is there anything happens round here, Elder, that you don't know about? Not a lot, no. Although, mind you, I think it's asking for trouble letting her do it. I mean, what does she know about cooking for 30 old age pensioners? Never been married, has she? Well, what's being married got to do with it? Well, she's not got the experience, that's what I'm saying. Oh, no. Look at her, a bundle of nerves. She'll muck it up. Mm, well, give her a chance anyway, Elder. I wish her the best of British luck. But it's not as though she's giving them a proper dinner. I know they give it a fancy name, but all it is is a bit of stew. Oh, no. No, when I'm cooking, I like to cook somewhat proper. Mm. Here's your tin of beans, love. Now, is there anything else you'd like? Um, scampi, perhaps, or asparagus tips? Not at the moment, thank you. Spine on. Yes. 
charity cake, is there? Ah, you wouldn't have such a thing as a bottle of champagne on the premises, Indeed would you? Indeed, I have. Is it for drinking on the premises? Absolutely. Shall keep you a moment. Thanks, love. Uh, while she's getting the champers, is there anything you'd like to be going on with? I'm afraid we've just sold the last of the caviar butties, but we might have... Yes, we have. Meat and tater pies left. No, I uh, don't want anything else, thanks, love. Oh, yes, I do. Two glasses. Two glasses. Aye. Right. Well, I'm not intending to drink a bottle of champagne on my own. Aren't you? I'm waiting for a lady. Won't be her, would it? No. Thank God. Yes, Hilda. A light air, please. I'll put it on ice, sir. I said I expect you'd like it chilled. Thanks, uh, Betty. Yes. Would you apply? It'll be six pounds, I'm afraid. Aye, right, well, uh... Yeah. And have a drink yourself. Well, it's a funny thing, Hilda. A frog came off in here. Mrs. Walker kissed it, and bingo, he was standing there. Oh, you know, you're bound with you. One of these days, they're going to come and take you away. Hilda, for all I care, they can come and get me right this minute. Ole! Senorita. My God! Oh, it's <laughs> lovely to see you. Where have you sprung from? Oh, it wasn't hard work motoring over here from Oldham. I wanted to have a look at you. I wanted to find out whether you were just as nice in your own territory as you were in sunny Spain. Oh, get off your puddle, then, full of sangria and sunshine. Aye, ah, well, we've got some sunshine in this bottle here. Ah, come on. Oh, smashing. Well, I suppose I might have known it to be her. Only he said he were waiting for a lady. No, very kind, dear. You know, if Alcitana fell in the cut, she'd come out smelling the lavender. <laughs> Hello there. Is someone looking for a taxi? First, I've heard of it. Uh, name of Smith. Well, perhaps that gentleman's called Smith. Mrs. Anna. The devil. Harry Payne. Oh, right. Hey, look who's here. <laughs> Mr. Wonderful. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I've come for the chucky hands. What are you on about? I'm here to say six frozen chickens off your hands. For the old folks' supper tomorrow night. Didn't Mavis tell you? Well, she ordered six chickens, yeah, but she didn't say what about you. Ah, well, I'm her assistant, you see. Helping her to do the cooking and that, you know. You? Well, what do you know about cooking? <laughs> apart from porridge. <laughs> That's not very nice. In fact, he's definitely a bit wounded now. Ah, well, I was a bit surprised, you know. Uh, no, she didn't talk to me about it. Anyway. I expect it'll be all right. That's uh, nine pound twenty then. Right, she'll pay you later. You what? Well, I haven't got nine pound twenty, have I? I haven't even got the twenty p. Oh, sorry, Eddie. What's the matter with you? You'll get your money. Now look at it my way, Eddie. You come in here. You want to take away six chickens? Now you don't offer me any money for them, and Mavis has said nothing to me about you. I'm sorry, I just can't do it. You'd give them to someone else, though, wouldn't you? It's just me you don't trust. It's isn't? not a matter of trust, Eddie. It's a matter of business. Oh no. If Mrs. Sharples came in, or Emily Bishop, you'd give them to them. No, it's just me. Well, don't think I don't feel it, mate, because I do. I'm human, you know. If you prickers, do we not bleed? <laughs> well, I take your point, Eddie, but let me put it this way. If you take our chickens without paying for them, do we not go bankrupt? Are you feeling all right, Ron, lad? You're a bit quiet. I'm right writer's rain. It's just I'm a bit puzzled, that's all, as to who wanted a taxi. Ah, not to worry, Ron, lad. After all, if nobody had ordered a taxi, we wouldn't be having this little session here, would we? <laughs> that's so true. There is no way we'd have had this little session here. It's early friendly, whether you can tell. He seems to me to be one of those friendly souls with a fund of goodwill to all men. They don't lash out on champagne through goodwill to men, only goodwill to women. Not give Ron any champagne, are they? Well, he always sticks to tomato juice, Hilda, when he's driving taxi. Oh, well, you can say what you like, but a chap like that only spends his money for one thing. Don't you think so, Mr. Walker? Well, I'm afraid I don't usually share your rather low view of humanity. I must admit, on this occasion, you nearly persuade me. It's not fair, though, you know. Look at her. She's got two fellas hanging round her. Hey, them photographs came out real good. You'll have to come round and have a look at them. Ah, I will do. Yeah. Some lovely ones of Harry, weren't they, Ron? They're practically all of Harry. Ah, well, that's why I never carry a camera. Them that have cameras never get on the photos. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> 
Hello, we've got a dead soldier here. I'll have to order another it's one. Nice, then. Uh, what would no, you have, Elsie? No, no, Ron, no. Sit down. It's all been arranged. Thank you very much, miss. Aye. You start on this stuff, you know. You've got to stick to it. It's my round, so do you mind if I get them? No, Ron, put your money away. Now give over. It's all seen to. Oh, you're lashing out, aren't you? Well, why not? <laughs> Oh, thanks, well, then. Uh, bring Ronnie some Martha juice, will you? Sure, we'll do flares for if you want them. I mean, that's what we're here for. Come in. Yeah, and the same for court if you want them. Sure. Uh, look, uh, why don't we meet next week and talk about this sometime, eh? Yeah. Yeah, Tuesday will be fine. Yeah, okay, Brian. Okay, mate. See you then, then. <laughs> Same here. Yep. I've got nothing to say to you two, except out. Mr. Baldwin. Anything that had to be said was said last night. You shouldn't even be on the building. You might have nothing to say to us, but we've got something to say to you. You had no right to sack us. Rubbish. Out. It's not rubbish. You didn't give us written warning. That's right. It was unfair dismissal. Oh, and who's been filling your head full of all this sort of stuff, eh? Nobody. Look, you used to work for me. You did something wrong. I caught you, so I sacked you, and that's the end. Oh, no, it's not. We're not going to let you walk all over us. We don't think you treated us fair, Mr Baldwin. We want our jobs back. Oh, no. As far as I'm concerned, he can stick his rotten job. Then what the hell are you wasting me time for? Because I... I want compensation for unfair dismissal. Oh, oh, you do, do you? And if I don't get it from you, I shall go to industrial tribunal, and they'll make you pay it. Now, look, girls, I'm not saying I was wrong in sacking you. You asked for it, and I was within my rights. Tell that to a tribunal. Oh, now, look, hang on a minute. Just hang on a second, will you? Now, look, uh, I'm a reasonable man. I don't want any aggro, do I? But, I mean, you put me in a very embarrassing situation. I mean, one of you wants one thing, and on the other hand, one of you wants something entirely different. <laughs> now, you want your job back, don't you? Yes, please. Oh, don't crawl to him. I'm not crawling. I just want my job back. And you, on the other hand, just want your pound of flesh out of my carcass. Well, you see how awkward it is for me, don't you? So why don't you just go away and have a talk about it amongst yourselves? And what good will that do? Well, you're both in the same boat, aren't you? Now, look, why don't you go away, have a talk about it, come and see me again? Well, I can't be fairer than that, can I? We'll do that. He's just playing for time. Come on! All. all right. But we'll be back. Yes, I'm sure you will. Oh, oh, she's always been the same, Elsie, yeah, Tanner, ever since the Yanks were over here in the war. Always like fellas who'd spend money on her. Is there anybody who doesn't, Tilda? Evidently, Bert, you're fascinated by Mrs Tanner's new friend. Well, he does come on like the last of the big spenders, Mrs Walker. True, but we may never see him again. In the meantime, Arthur Shawcross, who spends in pence rather than pounds, but who does come in every day, is waiting for his usual pint. Message received and understood. You can't help wanting to know more about him, though, can you? I can help it quite easily, Mrs. Elton. Oh, oh, yeah, well, I mean, it doesn't bother me all that much. <laughs> I don't care who he is or what he is, but uh, still, while she's in, I'll just have a word. What time do you have to be back at work, Elsie? Oh, not for a long time. Mark, Mike Ball will be grumble at me today, anyway. Uh, is, uh, is anybody sitting here? Yes, the invisible man. Oh, <laughs> oh, yes, very good. <laughs> no, only I just wanted a quick word. Yes, well, make it a quick word, Elder, because I'm enjoying myself. Yeah, well, I, I was wondering, uh, have you heard this tale about the street coming down for a ring road? Elsie and me's neighbours, you know, uh, Elder Hampton, Mrs. How do you do? You know damn well the street's not coming down for a ring road, Elder. It'll stop up here till it falls down. Oh, but you can't be sure of that, can you? Unless your friend here knows. You're, um, you're a councillor, aren't you? No, he's not. Fancy. Now, Annie Walker swore blind you were a counsellor. Must have got mi mixed up with somebody else. Ah, she must. Yeah. Somebody wants to see you at the bar, Elder. Me. Oh, yes, well, I'll, uh, I'll let you get on. <laughs> so, who is he then? Oh, I see. Well, you fail miserably. Don't know what you're talking about. I gather she's one of those people that never knows when she's not wanted. There's plenty of those about. There are. Uh, well, you know, I've enjoyed this lunch time. Yes, so have I, Harry. It's been a real treat. But what I really came over for was to sort out tonight. What about tonight? Well, I planned a real good Spanish reunion dinner tonight, Ron. 
and I booked a table at a Spanish restaurant. Oh, what a shame, Harry. But we can't manage it. You see, I've got a work seat. Pity. But uh, there's no way we can do it. What about you, Elsie? I mean, can you come along, even though Ron's working? Yes. Yes, of course I can come, Harry. I'd be very pleased to come. Great. Gatley's want a repeat order on those tops we sold them. They're dead chuffed with them. You told those girls, didn't you? Pardon? You heard me. You told those girls they had a case for wrongful dismissal. Did they tell you that? They didn't have to. Well, come on out with it. Don't lie about it. I don't intend to. Yes, I told them. In other words, you gave them the bullets to fire at me. Now, you'd give me one good reason why I shouldn't sack you as well. Well, I'll give you two good reasons for doing what I did, as I see it. In the first place, you're in the wrong. I'm sorry, but it's Look, true. Look, I don't pay you to tell me whether I'm right or wrong. I pay you to do what you're told. Yeah, but the point is... The I'll... point is that you deliberately stabbed me in the back. No. Look, they were bound to find out the minute they went to the labour exchange and were asked why they left their last job. And it all comes out, doesn't it? Well, they're sitting in a pub grumbling and somebody marks a card for her. That's no reason for you to go and tell them. Well, I think it's a damn good reason, because this way you can sort it out with them before it gets out all over the place. And you told me how important it was about the Western Front being sold and why it's being sold has to be kept quiet. It has. Right. So, that's why I thought you couldn't afford any aggro with Gail and Susie. You just have to settle with them. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no, there's no way that those two are going to get a golden handshake. And as you're so bloody clever, you better start thinking of a way out of it. Did you give me that number, though? He must have plenty of money, this Harry. Oh, he's not short of a bob or two. Do you like him? Well, of course I like him, otherwise I wouldn't be going out to dinner with him, would I? Oh, so you're giving Ron the push, then? Oh, well, that's a daft remark, that is. No, it isn't. You must be going off Ron if you're going out with Harry. Oh, you do talk some rubbish. Ron could have gone. He was asked, you know. What are you trying to do? Make so much out of nothing? I'm going out with Harry because I happen to like him. I'll go out with Ron for the very same reason. It was funny, though, wasn't it? Ron going to the Rovers when nobody wanted a taxi. Was it you that called Ron's taxi? Well, you little meddler, what are you trying to do? Cause trouble or summit? You little madam, in future, keep my, out of my business and keep your nose out of my friends and my business I'll and my life. <laughs> really? Oh, so I thought you were working. I see you're going out with that character, then. Yes, I am. Ron, well, what have you got against him? He's a pest and a hanger on. I, I can't stand the kind of person who has a bit of money and won't let anybody else buy around. And if he calls me Ron, my lad, just one more time, I... I just plain don't like him. I know, but I happen to like him, Ron. He's a nice fellow. And I certainly don't like the idea of you going out with him on your own. Look, I'm going out with him because you said you were working, and you're not working, are you? No, no, I'm not. I just said that so as we wouldn't have to put up with him. Yes, and it was very annoying. I like to decide these things for myself. So in future, let me decide. After all, I know you don't like him, but he's a nice enough fella. I do like him. He goes rattling on a bit, but he's all right. I don't happen to think he is. And I'll tell you something else. If he's going to keep on hanging around here, then you better make your mind up. It's going to either have to be me or him. No, no, I don't want any photographs, not yet. If anyone wants to look at the place, they can go and see it for themselves. No tourists. A few people that know that I'm selling the villa. Yeah. Yeah, OK, man. Well, if you want me, you know where you can find me, don't you? Yeah, and you. Ciao. Western Front? Yeah. If anyone wants an appointment to see the place, check with me first, OK? Right, sir. How'd you get on with the girls? I've told them. And? They'll be here about half five. Oh, right. There's one thing I don't quite understand, Mr Borman. What's that? Well, if you're going to see them anyway, why leave it till then? Well, for one thing, I've got more important things to do just now. And for another thing, it won't do them any harm to cool their heels a bit longer, will it? Do you think we stand a chance? What for? Compensation? No danger. I'm not so sure. Oh, we're not going to go through all this again, are we, Gail? He more or less told us to get lost, didn't he? He would have thought about it since then. I wish I could believe that. Look, he's not daft. He knows either we settle this between us or we take him to the tribunal. And they're not going to be taking us on, but them as well. And that is the last thing he wants. He's not the only one. All I want is me job back. That's what these things are for, Chuck, to prevent people like us being victimised by people like him. We've got rights and all, you know. And as for your job, well, you've had that, so we may as well take him for every penny we can. 
Aha! So you're up, are you? Yeah. What's it look like? Well, you were still in the land of Nod when I left for work We've this got morning. Nothing to you? get up for, have we? We were when you came in last night and yeah. all. Well, I think that's my business. Mm, did you have a good time to do with this Flash Harry fight? I will have less of the Flash Harry, if you don't mind. Go on, supping champagne in Rovers, he must be worth a bob or two. Yes, because that's because he happened to work for his living, not like some folk I know who lie in bed till all hours, not a million miles away from here. Happened to work for his living? He's retired. Retired? Retired, not that it's got out to do with you. Oh, no, nothing. It's just we worry about you, Elsie, and you know so very little about him. Unless you know something that we don't. Talk about the Inquisition. All right. He is worth a bob or two. That's because he had an engineering factory in Stockport. He did it himself just after the war. Now, when his son was old enough to take over, he let him. He did just that. Now, let me see. Is there anything I missed out? Oh, yeah. His wife died four years ago, and he happens to be very lonely. He also happens to be the kind of fellow that's great to go out with. Right? Satisfied? Right, well, can I have my dinner? Because I've got work to do if some folk round here haven't. There's a meat and potato pie in the oven. I'll get it. Ta. You seen him again, are you? I think that's my business. Oh, yeah. And it could be to a certain fellow round here who drives a taxi. Hey, it's a bit of all right, that, Maeve. Oh, now, look what you've done. You've spoiled it. Well, someone had to taste it. You don't want 30 old age pensioners going down with something nasty, do you? I thought you were supposed to be washing up. Oh, yeah. Forgot. It's just a throwback from me childhood. I always used to nick into parties before anybody else and eat the ears off the jelly rabbits. Not that I got invited to that many. No, me neither. Do you know, I had a very deprived childhood. Come to think of it, I'm having a very deprived adulthood, no. Well, it wasn't that I was deprived. It was just that nobody ever asked me to parties. Very sad, that. All right, how's it going? Oh, everything's under control, I think. Do you think Good. it's going to be enough? I mean, if, if you think I ought to make some more. I... Oh, no, no, it's ample there. And, uh, mm, it smells delicious. Oh, I'd hate to run short. No, no, there's enough, enough, really, there is. You're doing a great job. I'm proud of you. Oh, thank you. I hope to, you know. I think I can do this cocker van myself now. I couldn't even boil an egg before. Look, uh, I doubt if we'll be back from the show much before nine o'clock. I take it that's all right, Oh, is it? yes, that'll be fine. It'll be ready when you walk through that door, Squire. <laughs> all right, well, I'll leave you to it then. Right. Right, what's next? Uh, I think that's everything now until tonight. Um, this just needs another two hours, so if we're back here for, say, six... Bob's your uncle. <gasps> Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully nothing. It'll be the best nosh-up since my auntie Glad's funeral tea. Do you know I had 16 ham sandwiches and half a dozen Savoys? You know them sponges with the cream in the middle? Mm. Mind you, my uncle Frank, her husband, he missed it. Why? Well, he was watching Everton. Well, sit down, you're making me feel nervous. What we've got to say to you, we can say standing up. We've been sat down all day. Thanks to you. Well, I take it you've stopped bickering amongst yourselves and decided what you want. Yeah, we have. Right, well, tell me. In a word, compensation. <laughs> compensation? For wrongful dismissal. For getting rid of a couple of layabouts for unsatisfactory work. Well, if you don't believe us, ask him. I'm sure Mr Baldwin knows what the situation is. I'm sure he does. What we want to know is what he's going to do about it. Well, I don't reckon you've got a leg to stand on. Well, we'll see what the Tribune has to say, eh? Now, hang on a minute, hang on. I haven't finished yet. Oh, and I was under the impression you had. What do you reckon is going to happen when I tell them what a couple of lousy deckhands you turned out to be? They'll most likely award me compensation. Yeah, and they wait, wait till they hear what a sort of employee you turned out to be. Nobody will work for you ever again. Hang on, hang on. This is getting nobody anywhere, No, is it, it isn't. We didn't come here for a slangy match. Well, who started it, darling? You did when you shut the door of that rotten shop. Shut up a minute, Susie. Why can't we have our job back? We promise we won't let it happen again. I wouldn't work for him if he was the last boss on earth. You wouldn't get another chance, It was darling. only the timekeeping. You'd no complaints about our work. No, there's no chance, no. I'd rather have me job back than compensation. What good's compensation if you haven't got a job? No, I've told you before, you're just wasting your time. Why? Because there won't be a shop to work in, will there? No shop. Selling it. You're selling it, the Western Front. So that's why you wanted to get rid of us, so you wouldn't have to pay redundancy money. Is that right? Steve? Would you credit it, eh? Wait till this little story gets about. I'd rather it didn't get around, if you don't mind. It'd be bad for business. Oh, you want something now, do you? 
Well, you better make us an offer, and it better be a good one. That is blackmail. No, it's business. Yeah, well, I've got to have time to think about it. All right, but don't take too long, will you? Come on. Taxi, missus. Ron, what are you doing? I thought you might fancy a ride home. Besides, you don't know who you're going to meet in a night like this. Well, are you going to hop in? Are you going to have me booked for obstruction? Well, since you put it that way, let's go. I'm quite capable of carrying a few packets of toffee, Tom. I am not in my dotage. I've never said you would, did I? Well, why are you calling me back like a oh, little lap dog? I'm not going to be diddling you, you know. I you've come for the things Ken ordered, the uh, sweets for the outing. We have. Paid for, we... I take it. Oh, yes, love, there's uh, not to worry about me. Take your fingers out, Tom. I want it looking as if there's any cannibals in. Can't eat cattle with false teeth, you know. Why can't you be grateful instead of always fault finding you like other folk? Be thankful for something you can do something out of. What are you laughing at, Al Roberts? Uh, nothing, Mrs. Sharples, nothing at all. Look, if you two don't get your skates on, we won't make it, you know. Well, I haven't been gone long since if it hadn't been for him. Women should be bumped on these dudes, you know. <laughs> They're like kids, aren't they? Where are you going anyway? Old time musical? No, the Weatherfield Amateur Operatic Society, if we ever get there. Oh, well, think of the workers. Yeah, you wouldn't like to go instead of me, would you? Not for a gold clock. Oh, it's not your night, is it, mate? It hasn't been my day, neither. Never mind. Your next day out might change your look. Now, how do you fancy a little side bet? Make it more interesting, eh? No, I don't. You don't? No. Double to start? Yeah. Hello, Rover's return. Who? Yeah, yeah, he is, look. Eddie caught you wanted. Who is it? Some bird sounds very sexy. Hello, Edward Yates at your service. Hello, Mavis. Yeah, of course I will, love. Yeah, yeah, this very second. On a low light, right? Right. I didn't know you were doing a bit with Mavis. She's cut her finger, it won't stop bleeding. She wants me to put the grub on across the road. Likely story. You keep practising you, I'll be back before I can say double top. Right. Good evening, Mrs. Oak. What's good about it? Give us a couple of bottles to take out. Cosy yeah. night at home, Mr. Ogden. Just you and Mr. Ogden. Candlelit dinner for two. Egg and chips on my own, if you must know. Not like some folk I could mention. Well, what's she up to now? It is Elsie you're talking about, isn't it? Yeah. Only canoodling with that taxi fella now, isn't she? Last night it was him she met in Majorca. How does she do it? That's what I'd like to know. <sighs> You'll uh, stay for a couple. Gail and Susie, they're in, I take it. Well, probably, but what difference does that make? I wanted a quiet word. OK, go on, I'm listening. It's about Harry Payne. I, I'm sorry I sounded off last night you know, telling it was him or me. Yeah, you did. You're seeing him again, then? Well, what? Ron, if you've got something to say, spit it out, will you? Well, like I said, I'm sorry I sounded off last night, but it doesn't change the way I feel about that man. Well, that's your problem, Ron. OK, so he's, he's, he's good company, he's got a fat wallet and he's generous, but... I don't want you making a regular thing of it, that's all. All right, all right. Now, I've got something to say to you. If Harry does ask me out again, it's up to me to decide whether I go or not. Now, do I make myself clear? Very. Thank you. I'm glad we've got that sorted out. And thank you for the lift. Oh, fellas. Eddie! How's your finger? What's up? It's all dried up. Hey? It's all dried up. Well, it isn't all, is it? Well, I, I did what you told me. Put it on the wrong ring. That's the fast ring. That gets red hot no matter how low you put it on. Well, I wasn't to know that, was I? No. I mean, I've had no experience with electricity. Most of the places I've lived in, it's been cut off. Oh. What are we going to do, Eddie? Yeah. What are we going to do? They'll be back in an hour. There's no meal. 
Look, uh, stay calm. Just stay calm and think. And think. Yeah, think. Um, uh, a, a mystery tour. I'll give a ring to the theatre, tell the driver to take him for a bit of a run before they get back. You can't think of anything practical to say. We should shut up. Right, yeah. Daft idea, that, yeah, daft. Just uh, stay calm and think. I am calm. I'm not calm. I think I'm dead. I hope I am. Jackson's. 30 fish and chips for nine o'clock. They closed. It's Wednesday night. Oh. We've just got to provide them with something else. We can't do a cock or what's it, can we? We haven't got time now. We've got about an hour. And we've got to feed 30 people. Spaghetti. That's what we'll give them. Spaghetti? Mm. Where are we going to get the bread for that much toast? Oh, not spaghetti on toast. Spaghetti bolognese. Have you spent a lot of time on the continent, oh, maybe? Look, Eddie, if you want to make yourself useful, will you go out and try to lay your hands on as much spaghetti and as many tins and mints as you can get? Yeah, in case you haven't noticed, the shops are shut. Uh -huh. Try the corner shop, they'll help you. Not the door, down if you have to. Oh, right, OK. Go on, get on. Right, eh. Uh, I'm sorry about the, uh, you know... Oh, accidents will happen, and we're not done for yet. Oh. Come in! Harry! Hello, Elsie. Oh, come in! Hi. I hope I'm not interrupting anything. Oh, nothing I wouldn't be glad to get shut of. Ah, right. Oh, well, you better put these in water. They've been on the back seat of my car all the afternoon. Uh, are these for me? Who else? Well, it's not my birthday, you know. Oh, well. Just say that it's my way of saying thanks for last night. Oh, no, it's, it's me that should be saying thank you to you. It was a smashing night. Aye. Um, you're not dashing off, are you? No, I'm in no hurry. Well, if you just give me time to put the ironing board away, I'll see if I can squeeze the dregs out of the gin bottle. Or is it scotch you prefer? Well, I don't mind anything you've got. Oh. <laughs> it was a smashing night last night, and it was great, honest. Aye, I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed it. And I'm wondering about Saturday. I've got a couple of tickets for the dinner dance. Should be a good night. Do you like to come? Well, uh, Saturday, uh, could I think about it? But of course. Oh, well, sit yourself down. Right. Oh, you've been a long time. Maybe, but I've done you proud. Did you get them from the corner shop? No, I couldn't even raise a smile there. They must be out. Well, where did you get them from? Well, I knocked on doors. Explained the gravity of the situation. Mind you, there's not a lot of people around here who use spaghetti. I'd have done better than Naples. Uh, I've got you half a dozen tins of mints and a couple of other tins in case you haven't got enough. Do you think there will be enough? Oh, well, I'll have to be what? What's this? Dog meat? Well, it's desperate situations, isn't it? Oh, not that desperate. Listen, they eat better than we do. It says so on the telly. Do you think you'll have enough? Oh, yes, I should think so. Will you just be opening them tins? Oh, right. Do you know something, Mavis? You are a pillar in a crisis. Well, I was a brownie, you know. Isn't it amazing how you meet people from home in Mallorca, especially from your own town? Ah, uh, especially Mallorca. But it's getting like Blackpool now. Oh, the X, this. Uh, help yourself, will you, Harry? Ah, uh, I don't need asking twice. Oh, it's you. I hope it's not a bad time, but I was passing. Oh, I'm not the only one with that idea tonight. I'm not? Oh. Hello, Ron Lunt. <laughs> Not working again, are you? You'll be killing yourself in the finish. <laughs> you won't ever do that. No, my working days are over. Uh, Harry just dropped in to say uh, thank you for last night. Did he now? Ah, uh, you missed a great night last night, Ron. But that's the story of your life, isn't it? I'd like a word, Elsie. <laughs> well, this is getting to be a habit, isn't it? Do you want me to make myself scarce? Of course not, Harry. You sit yourself down. You haven't finished your drink yet. Well, that's true. Just dropped in to say thank you. That's right, Ron. And um, what's that supposed to mean? I didn't notice I asked you to drop in. Did you ask him? I think that's my business. Oh, so that's how it is. Ron, I think you've got the wrong idea. I don't think so. Not at all. I think I've got the right idea. Yes, right, well, come on in, everybody, then. 
Mmm. Oh, something smells good. Better be I'm starving. You're starving? <laughs> You're always eating, Will. He eats like all. I've noticed that they ought to give him a nose bag. What is it, any room? Cock of ham. What's that when he's at home? Chicken. Oh, why don't they call it chicken? Yeah, yeah. Right, well, if you just like to sit down, please. If everybody like to take a seat, sit wherever you like, and then we'll, uh, we'll get the food brought out to you. Won't be long. Hark at the hungry hordes. Oh, I do hope it'll be all right. Of course it will. Stop worrying. They can get their choppers round it. That's all that counts. No, not if they don't enjoy it. Listen, if it tastes as good as it smells, they'll be coming back for seconds. All right, how's it going? Oh, we're all ready. Could have tied it better myself. Spaghetti? Yeah, well, it's spaghetti bolognese, actually. None of your rubbish here, Squire. Isn't she a little darling, eh? Well, you see, what happened? Uh, if we had a week to spare, I'd explain what happened, but uh, the important thing is to get this lot into their little tums. Oh, I don't know whether they'll like spaghetti. Well, if they don't, they know what they can do, don't they? Well, this is the rummiest thing I've ever had. I've never seen. I'm afraid it's been a bit of a hitch, Mrs. Sharples, but I'm sure you'll enjoy this just as much. Well, I'll try my best. There we are. That'll put feathers on your chest. You don't think I'm eating that, do you? What's wrong with it? You don't even have to put your teeth in. Hey, uh, you do know it is, don't you? Well, I haven't been up all day digging worms. Spaghetti. That's what it is. Uh, he doesn't like anything I tie. Not since his wife got friendly with the ice cream stuff. It's not Italian. It's from the co-op. It came from Italy before it got to co-op, didn't it? It's high Thai food, and that's enough for me. Oh, shut up, Will Foxley. Get it down, you. You mind your own business in the chapel. Don't you no, talk no, to I'm, me. I'm, I'm sorry about this, but, uh, you know, you're the only one who's complaining. Oh, uh, well, I'm me, not everyone else. Well, thank the Lord for that. Let's not go to Chippy where I can get some decent grub. Aye. Come on. Aye. You're not Chippy, not Muck, are you? Aye. Sorry, Mr. Barlow. He doesn't like anything Italian. Not so he won't even ride in his son's car. Well, because it's Italian? Yeah, aye, a Volkswagen. <laughs> are you coming? I am coming, Will. Nothing like it. Uh, well, it's a bit early to say. All right, if I call it a day now, Mr. Borgham. Yeah, off you go, man. Thanks for coming back. I appreciate that. Make it up to you sometime. Uh, something else. Well, I just wondered if you'd made up your mind what you're going to do about Gail and Susie. Well, what do you reckon I should do? Well... Well, come on, you know the situation as well as I do. What do you reckon I should do, eh? Well, going by the facts... Ah, well, that's a good place to start. Well, if Gail and Susie do blab about selling the Western Front, it's going to cost you a lot of money. And people are going to be asking questions, and it's not going to take them long to find out why you're selling it. Because we've got some stiff competition coming up, right? Right. So I reckon it's in our interests to... Settle up with them and finish it. I like it so far. Uh, question is, how much? Ah, well, that is a $64,000 question, how much? Mm. Well? Uh, uh, well, a couple of hundred? A piece? Yeah. Steve, lad, we're buying off a couple of kids. We're not making a bid for Kevin Keegan. Yeah, well, how much do you reckon? A hundred. A piece? Yeah. <sighs> They'll not take that. What, pound notes in their sticky little hands? I tell you, kid, when you haven't got much money, that's a lot of bread. Well, that went down well, too. Oh, it's almost like a miracle, isn't it? Hey, you said we could have some when that lot was served. I'm sorry, Eddie, it's all finished. Yep, it's all gone. What, oh, they've scoffed the lot? Afraid so. Well, would you credit it? Oh, I'll tell you what, Eddie, would you like to come round to my place for some supper? Oh, you're on. <laughs> you don't mind people talking. Oh, it's all right. Ken's coming as well. Excuse me. <laughs> Now, oh, what are they up to? And what are you two doing coming back so quick? Well, they were close, weren't they? Ah, <laughs> so you right. Uh, well, give us a tip then, Will. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, then, let's be having it. Oh, what, Miss Bottomley? That spaghetti stuff. I'll have to eat some of it. If I've got a bit of an empty stomach, I'll get wind. Well, I'm afraid it's all gone, every last bit. There wasn't even any left for us. Well, who's had my plate? Me. And I, that is. <laughs> And may I say right here and now, I think it's the best meal I've ever had inside this place. Here so it, let's here say it. three cheers for Mavis Riley. Hip hip! Hooray! 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 Hip, hooray! Hip, hooray! Yeah, well done, mate. Oh, 
Well, change the flipping record, girl. You can't have your job back, and that's that. Yeah, all right. In that case, 100 quid's better than nothing. Well? Done. But cash, mind you. You'll get it. All right, you lot. Come on, let's go. Will you have one with us to celebrate? No, Tara. I've been working since 8 o'clock this morning. I wish I had. Yeah. That's it. See Oh, hell. Come in! Oh, it's you! May I come in? Uh, do you know what time it is? I, I'm sorry it's so late, but uh, I had to see you. I couldn't let what happened tonight pass off just like that. Yeah, well, I think you said enough when Harry was here. More than enough, and I'm sorry, but look... I don't know, he's just like a red rag to a bull as far as I'm concerned. But why, Ron? He's a nice little fella. I didn't come here to talk about Harry Payne. I came to say I'm sorry for blowing up like I did. There was no excuse for behaving like that. Yeah, well, I didn't exactly behave like the perfect little hostess myself, With did I? With good reason. Anyway, Elsie, look, I'm sorry. Honestly, I am. I want you to know it. OK. So you've apologised? You accept? Yeah, why not? Good. Well, there's just one thing, though, I'd like to say to you. Go ahead. Well, you're a nice fella, Ron, and we've had some good times. Right, and it's just on well, the beginning. Well, that depends on you. How do you mean? Well, who I see and who I go out with is entirely up to me. Not you, not anybody else. If you care to go and stick around, I'll go out with you as often as you like. But don't start trying to run my life. Because if you do, you and I are really going to fall out. <laughs> Susie and Gail heading for the bright lights of London in tomorrow night's classic Coronation Street, same time, 9 o'clock. Next tonight, The Comedians. <laughs>